Okay, so something that you probably didn't know about me is that I've been collecting movie posters, and I've been collecting movie posters for pretty much the entirety of my life. Uh, in fact, uh, I probably collected my earliest posters around seven or eight years old, and given that I'm almost 30 now, that means I've been collecting them for over 20 years now, and that is absolutely frightening. There are people who are going to be watching this video who probably weren't even alive when I was first collecting these posters, and that's... that is a deeply scary thought. I have my big art project folder just filled up with movie posters I've been collecting all my life. Since we have nowhere really to go right now, I figured it might be fun for all of us to look at all these posters that I've collected together. Now, what you see on the screen right now, this set here, that is only half of it. Uh, this is probably going to be two videos worth. This is going to take me hours to get through. Absolutely hours. But I don't think most people would really mind. The purpose behind this video is essentially a long play video recording to use VHS parlance. And essentially, this is just going to be a couple of hours long at the very least. And it's essentially just something to throw on in the background if people want to have some company or just want to listen to something or essentially just hang out. You know, this is just going to be a very, very informal video and me going through each of these films. Maybe you can get a couple of recommendations out of me because of this, but you will have to excuse me if I do get a little bit emotional at times. I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but this is me retracing through my life and uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's a life well lived, but <laughs> it is a life all the same. It is a, a life in movie posters. So uh, if I, if I get a little bit teary-eyed sometimes or I stumble a little bit, please forgive me. I'm, I'm kind of going through these and I haven't seen a lot of these in maybe over a decade at the very least. It's been a long time since I've actually rummaged through all of them. So right here for this video exclusively, we're going to be talking about my massive movie poster collection acquired over decades. Are we ready? Oh boy, am I ready. Let's go. Let's start this thing. Okay, so the first thing we have here is not actually a movie poster. This is a freebie item that was in cinema lobbies to promote The Simpsons movie. This is a copy of the Springfield Shopper. Uh, and it celebrates Springfield having the angriest mob ever. Congratulations, Springfield. Mayor Quimpy has declared the crowd that tore through downtown last week to be our angriest mob ever. The announcement came at a dignified town hall ceremony, during which the mayor gave Homer Simpson, the focus of the mob's fury, a golden statue to commemorate his participation. This seems like it's a postscript to the events of the movie, because, of course, if you remember, that's a screen cap from the actual movie itself. And, uh... Uh, there's all sorts of things in here. There's way too much for us to go through all by ourselves, to be honest. Yeah, so there's lots of stories in here. For example, there's uh, Bart riding naked. That's another event that happens in the movie. And then we've got this Critics Corner from uh, Homer Simpson reviewing Star Wars. For those of you who are not familiar with Star Wars, it's a parody of Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny. Okay, this concludes my review of Ray the Lost Ark. <laughs> Lots and lots of stuff here. Um, got comics in there. Uh, Krusty and Sideshow Bob. Uh, Smiling Joe Fishin's Fun Corner. You can do a dot trace of Mr. Burns if you really wanted to. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, a guide to all the Simpsons characters here, in case you weren't familiar with any of them somehow through the TV show that by that point had been running for at least 16, 17 years. And on the back page, we have got a 2000 city town guide with all the sites of Springfield, just all there. All right, so our next one is a poster to promote The Matrix, which is available on DVD and UMD. And if that doesn't tell you exactly when this was made, I don't know what will. The copyright on this says 2006. So this was, I think this came out of a magazine. This was... Empire Magazine or Total Film? It'll be one of those two. Yeah, this is, I think, to tie in with Greatest Movies Ever or something like that, and they were just giving away posters with the issue. I've never been a fan of this poster design. This is the design that they used on the VHS cover. Yes, that's right. I watched The Matrix on VHS, even though it is well known as being one of the movies that got people into the DVD format back at the time. Nope. Watched it on good old-fashioned tape. <laughs> um, yeah, 
Not that stopped me from enjoying it. I was well underage. It was a 15 certificate movie, but that's how you did things back then. You would wait for them to arrive on video and then watch them well below the age certificate. And uh, I did plenty of that back in the day. What a rebel I was. What an absolute rebel. Like I said, I've never been a fan of this design. It's just the characters sort of standing around awkwardly posing. Make Cypher look like a good guy. He's not! He is absolutely not, but I suppose he is technically one of the main characters. UMD, now that sounds like something I'm going to have to explain to people. The UMD discs were frankly rather pointless. They had DVD picture quality, but most of them were cropped into 16x9 because they were taking uh, note of the fact that a PSP screen obviously is much smaller. So if you have a 235 uh, one film, it would be extremely small inside the frame. So they just crop the movies, which is always a bad thing. Don't crop movies. It's, it's bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop it. Don't do it. This is actually double-sided on the other side is Ben-Hur, the collector's edition on DVD now. That was the multi-disc set. That was four discs, if I remember correctly. Uh, hopefully I'm remembering correctly. There is no way to tell. It's a poster that really gives you a sense of how epic the movie is without really showing you all that much. You've got a bit of the chariots here, but mostly it's all about that title. It's all about the grandiosity of it. And look at how many people are uh, in the poster design. You got them here, you got them here, you got all the crowds everywhere. Really gives you a sense of the spectacle and grandiose nature of the film just in one image. That is a fantastic design. There's a reason why that poster design is a classic. Most of them are in order I collected them in. Uh, this is not the case for this next batch. Um, for some reason, my cinema, in about 2001 or 2002, they put out posters for movies that were released in 93 and 94. They must have found some posters in a back room somewhere, because my cinema has been around for yonks and yonks and yonks, and they must, they must have just found them somewhere and realised, oh, we need to clear out some space. Let's just put them out for people. So, inexplicably, I walked in, and this is what I used to do as a kid. I would expressly go into the cinema walk in and collect the freebie posters and walk out again as a ritual. That's quite sad when I mention it out loud, but that's, that is genuinely what I used to do. I was that much of a movie aficionado. This next poster is for Robocop 3. Chaos, corruption, civil war. He's back to lay down the law. Robocop 3, of course, being the worst of the sequels, although I don't know if it's the worst Robocop related property thing, let's face it. <laughs> so the story behind Robocop 3, uh, notoriously, PG-13, uh, and Orion Films, who produced the original Robocop films, they were in dire financial straits by 1991, to the point where most of the movies that were filmed in that year weren't released until several years later in 93 and 94. So that includes movies like Blue Sky, which Jennifer Lang actually won the Oscar for in 1994, even though it's a movie that she did several years previously. There's also the Martin Short, Charles Grodin movie, Clifford. I'm sorry for reminding you of Clifford, but that was one of those movies. But Robocop 3 was also a movie that was shot around that time and shelled for years while Orion tried to stumble back from the brink of bankruptcy. It didn't last very long, to be honest, mostly because they were releasing movies like Robocop 3, which were crap. Now, you'll notice that most of these posters are in the horizontal design. This is known as a quad or uh, in these cases, a mini quad. And it's interesting, it makes it stand out from many other countries. You almost know right from a glance that that's a UK poster because it's in the horizontal design. Because the US and many other countries favor the one she, which is obviously vertical. Uh, there will be some vertical posters in here, but most of them will be the quad format. Anyway, let's move very quickly off uh, Robocop 3. Okay, this is going to be one of the ones that I forgot I even had. Uh, oh, this is a magazine giveaway. Okay, so let's start here with this quad of Dream Girls. Again, you can kind of see the limitations of the quad format as we talk about it, because uh, if you've seen the US one sheet design of this poster, you'll know that it's not cutting their heads off really awkwardly, like this design is doing right here, but they've obviously had to very awkwardly 
try and crop that design into size. Again, a lot of these posters uh, are giveaways with Total Film Magazine. So I did not fold this poster like this. That is how the poster came. There's a lot of posters in here that are going to be like that because they were given away free with the magazine. What you will notice though is there is some, there is some damage here. And also in this corner here, that actually comes from my wall because I have a metal closet door and that's where most of the posters are stuck. Because I've stuck them with magnets, sometimes they, they get stuck to the door itself. And so in trying to peel them off, uh, that's where you get that little bit of damage there. So a lot of those posters that I've hung up have had a little bit of damage if they have designs on the back of them. Uh, on the other half of this design is a vertical poster for Shrek the Third. Shrek the Third is not the best Shrek movie. I would actually argue that it's the worst one because it's by far the most boring. This is the teaser design for the movie, which has um, a crown on Shrek's head because he becomes king after the toad played by John Cleese. He croaks it. Ha 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 Let's very quickly move on, shall we? All right, back to the 93 posters here. So this is Once Upon a Forest. I have never seen this movie, but I know that it uh, was not well received. I believe this was a a animated children's movie with an eco message. Hanna-Barbera production. Yeah. In association with HTV Wales. Wow, partly British. I didn't know that. That's, that's something. That's a detail. It says, from the creator of an American tale. And I'm going to take a guess that that does not mean Don Bluth. They wanted to think that it does. It's a bit like those movies that always say from the producer of Shrek. There's that one producer. He, ma he just makes constant bad animated films. Oh, another one from 94, Black Beauty. This is quite a nice design, actually. Uh, and again, never seen this movie. Sean Bean, of course, stars in this film. It's quite a popular adaptation. I know that many people really enjoyed this version of Black Beauty. What I don't like about this design is the awkwardly pasted in photo here to remind you oh that's who the lead characters of the movie are it's the one small detail that otherwise ruins a really strong design there you don't need to say oh by the way there are kids in it uh this is probably where it started though this is a poster from 1998 uh, i remember this poster actually very very well uh so this is the uk quad poster for there's something about mary and it has that thing that a lot of posters used to do, and I don't know if they still do it now, uh, the roll call of uh, major character faces on there. But yeah, we've got all the uh, all the different characters here, spying on Mary, stuck on Mary, faking it for Mary, Lee Evans getting a very prominent position, and billing, because obviously local talent. You got to promote the local talent. Make sure you know that the local talent is in the movie. BBC Radio 1 Film of the Month. That must have been when uh, Mark Kermode was doing the reviews for Radio 1. Was that his time? I'm pretty sure it was. I wonder what his opinions on this movie are now. The Prince of Egypt. Uh, this is the teaser design for the movie. Again, looking a little bit scuffed. Uh, I'm going to say that these posters are probably not kept very well, especially some of the earlier ones, which I obviously did put up on my wall and things like that. Again, this is what a good teaser poster should do. It tells you very little about the movie, but also makes a big impact. And it, it is actually quite reminiscent of that earlier Ben Hunter design that we were looking at earlier. I believe the main poster was... Um, a chariot race between Moses and Ramses. Oh, I didn't need to describe it because I also had the main design. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This design makes it look a lot more like a generic kids movie. It's pretty obvious what they're trying to do here. It's, you know, they're trying to set it for the kids. Action, lots and lots of action. Horses, chariots, friendship. Look at these two being friends. That won't last. A comedy straight from the heart, Return to Me, David Duchovny and Me Driver. I think I have rented it on tape back in the day. You're probably going to be hearing me saying that a lot. This is a very, very generic design that tells you nothing about this movie, but it doesn't need to because the idea is, is that, hey, it's these two, romance. It doesn't matter that they're not even remotely looking at each other or anything like that. The premise is that David Duchovny loses his wife in an accident, played by Jolie Richardson, 
and her heart is given to Minnie Driver, who is in desperate need of it. And then years later, he falls in love with Minnie Driver, unbeknownst to him, carrying his wife's old heart, and she discovers this, and, oh, there's a crisis, there's a crisis. And, of course, the only part of the poster that in any way puts across the premise is the tagline, but perhaps that's a, that's a bit of a hard thing to put into a poster design. Three to Tango, this is one of the movies that Matthew Perry did outside of Friends. Again, this is a very generic poster. This seems to be a thing with romantic comedies, is that people are smiling, not really looking at each other, and laughing. They're all so happy. What are they so happy about? Uh, beats me, to be honest, because the premise of this movie is that there is the mistaken impression that Matthew Perry's character is gay. You see what I mean about the fact that this probably couldn't get made today? Uh, American Pie, a uh, fairly iconic poster this. I believe they recreated it for American Pie Reunion, or American Reunion as it was simply known in America. I've never actually seen any of the American Pie movies. I know, I know, film brain. You haven't seen a major franchise like that? I know, I know. There's a lot of movies out there. There's a lot of movies out there. And this came out in 1999, so I would have been eight when this movie came out. I was definitely aware of American Pie. It certainly had a huge cultural influence. I am definitely familiar with the infamous pie scene, which is on the poster here, sans the context of it, which I will not explain here because I want to have this video monetized. This seems to continue the trend of group shots of people laughing and smiling at the camera to let you know that it's a comedy. This is a real obscurity. I would be very, very surprised if people remotely remember this movie. I don't even know if this has a DVD release. Whatever happened to Harold Smith? In 1977, Disco wasn't the only magic in town. Uh, Tom Courtney, Stephen Fry, Lulu, David Thewlis. Tom Courtney plays some sort of psychic and he ends up being disgraced when he kills a man who had a pacemaker and sort of comedy ensues from there. That sort of alluded to, with the bent spoon there, that's not a Matrix reference, there is no spoon. That is a reference probably to Yuri Geller, who spent a lot of time concentrating like this on trying to bend spoons. Look at my mental agility, yeah. He, he probably didn't look quite as constipated as I am trying to impersonate him right there, but um, yeah. Ooh, okay, so this is the poster for The Mummy. Really action-packed design. There's a lot of things going on here. Lots of people on horseback, people carrying cats. You got the mummy in the background there. The sands will rise, the heavens will part. The power will be unleashed. Strong design. I really enjoy The Mummy. It's a movie that I have seen numerous, numerous times, and you probably have as well. Here is another movie that I have not seen. My Dog Skip. Every family needs an optimist. A movie about a dog. Uh, and if it's a movie about a dog, it follows a fairly familiar format, to be honest. A heartwarming family tale that'll make you laugh and cry, says Ben McDermott of Live and Kicking Magazine. <laughs> Oh man, doesn't get any more 90s than that. Live and Kicking Magazine is uh, a spin-off of the Saturday morning kids TV show uh, that was hosted by Zoe Ball for a time. Uh, I imagine that publication does not exist today, given the show does not either. Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Peter Fonda, Mara Wilson and Alec Baldwin starring in this uh, live action version of Thomas the Tank Engine. A Americanized for uh, for the US audience and then brought over here. Uh, I think it was mostly shamed as being far too American, far too American. But um, I'm sure it's perfectly fine if you were a kid who was very much into his uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. This is the poster for American Beauty, as you can see. American Beauty is one of those movies that I probably should have seen, but I have not. Uh, and uh, given recent revelations, uh, it's a, I'd imagine it's a bit of an awkward viewing experience. If a movie in any way needs some sort of critical backing to get audiences bums in seats, they will splash those quotes all over that damn poster. So there will be lots of posters in here that are just covered 
practically wall-to-wall -wall in quotes. It's nicely done, I think. It's fairly tastefully done. It's, you know, got the image there and it's on black, but it's still a poster dominated by quotes. This is a one-sheet design for Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? This is, again, one of those posters that tells you nothing about the movie because the only thing they want you to know about it is George Clooney. And that's what they put on there. It's a, it's just a generic shot of George Clooney from the movie. You know, you don't need to say any more about it. It's got George Clooney in it. Go see it. Go see it. It's fine. It's good. Again, another obscurity for you. Uh, get Real. This is notable, I think, as one of the earliest LGBT movies that was in the mainstream-ish uh, in, in the late 90s, uh, it was still very rare to see movies covering that topic. To me, was this a really terrible design? It feels like an ad for um, a spot cream at the time. <laughs> it really does. I actually had this poster on my wall for quite a few years, and uh, I was completely unaware of the subject matter. <laughs> I just thought it was a movie about going to school. And I suppose technically it is. Uh, one sheet design for Toy Story 2. The toys are back in town. This is a nice sort of basic design, just the characters on white, really. If you're wondering what my ordering of uh, Toy Story films is, uh, my ordering personally, one, three, two, four? I mean, three and one, that's a really close call, really. This is the quad design for Nazi Professor 2. Uh, the Clumps, as it's officially subtitled, but obviously they couldn't do that because they're, they're streamlining it. Eddie Murphy is the Clumps. Uh, basically just a, a group shot of the characters on white. What a coincidence to have two posters that are essentially that back to back. I believe the, uh, the American design for this was uh, a shot of Eddie Murphy with all the characters poking out around him as opposed to all being sat on the sofa. You've got Buddy Love there. I believe that this head, this headshot here is reused from the original Nutty Professor poster. Uh, I don't blame Eddie Murphy for not wanting to pose in that costume because uh, it was apparently incredibly hot. Right, so this is another movie I've not seen. Uh, Madeline. This stars Frances McDormand, who has a massive crease over her face, unfortunately, in an old house in Paris that was covered with vines. Based, of course, off the popular books of the same name. You'll notice that quite a few of these will be Bond movie posters. And this is the first of them. The world is not enough. I believe this was the design they used internationally. You've got the uh, characters in a very strong pose. You've got um, Sophie Marquis as Electra King, who is uh, kind of seductively uh, posed across of uh, Pierce Brosnan, which appears to be a subtle allusion to the fact that in the plot, uh, Bond has to protect her but also that she might be manipulating him at the same time. That's actually quite a clever detail. And then you've got all the shots from the movie kind of stitched in as well. Uh, I love the fact that they've put in uh, Goldie there. Goldie, who plays a sporting role as uh, Robbie Coltrane's henchman, also on the poster, because, of course, local talent promote the local talent. Gives you a really good idea of what the film is like. But, of course, you probably already know what the film is like. It's a Bond movie. You know, The Little Vampire. Now, this I did remember seeing. Jonathan Lipnicki of Jerry Maguire fame before he got big and incredibly buff, which is very disconcerting if you know him as a wee tiny lad there. That's Richard E. Grant and Alice Krieg as the vampires. Jim Carter there as the vampire hunter. Jim Carter, who would eventually become very well known for Downton Abbey. Oh, we got the uh, vampire cows on the poster as well. Always nice to have a bit of vampire cow action here. Pitch Black, the first movie with Vin Diesel as Riddick. There's a new reason to be afraid of the dark. Kind of sells this more as an action movie than it does a horror film. I like the sort of eclipse element that is located there. It's a design that would be much better as a one sheet because obviously you could focus in on that area and I think that's what they did on at least one of the designs for the one sheet. But because you've got the quad design, you've got all this empty space here, which is I think is taken up by a stretched, very warped shot of the uh, Aliens POV. So this is an iconic poster, The Blair Witch Project. Uh, you got Heather Donahue's face on there. <laughs> I'm so scared, I'm so scared. In October of 1994, three student filmmakers disappeared in the woods near Burkittsville, Maryland, while filming a documentary. A year later, their footage was found. Everything you've heard is true. Except it isn't, because this was a massive hoax. The whole Blair Witch uh, phenomenon was a real thing at the time. There were genuinely people that believed that the actors involved in the film 
died and that this was a real snuff film. I think it says something about the time that we genuinely believe that a snuff film essentially was getting uh, uh, distribution. Billy Elliot, this is celebrating its 20th anniversary as well. Another good example here of festooning your poster with quotes, in particular, Baz Big Mobile. I hope I have pronounced your name correctly, but you were on so many posters and things. Uh, I believe the showbiz correspondent for the Daily Mail. It's a nice style design. I think this is literally just a screen cap from the movie that they've blown up and they've kind of distorted the colours. Actually borderline overexposing there. Jamie Bell being very prominent on the design. Bowfinger! Oh man, Bowfinger is great. I, I really like Bowfinger a lot. It's a very, very funny satire of the movie business. They go into lie, cheat and steal, but in a nice way. I feel like that's not really technically conveying the premise of the movie because obviously... They are lying and cheating, and maybe they do do a little bit of stealing, but uh, that makes it sound like it's a heist movie, or like a con movie. Very sort of dirty rotten scoundrels, it's cynically not that. Maybe I'm just splitting hairs here. Oh, the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. Uh, the prequel to the Flintstones movie. I have not seen either of the Flintstones films, uh... I heard they were quite bad and avoided them. This one featured Mark Addy and Stephen Baldwin as the main characters. And Alan coming up there as the great Gazoo, because that's what people wanted from a Flintstones movie, that character. Wonder Boys, from the director of LA Confidential, A Weekend from Hell Became the Time of His Life. Michael Douglas, Tobey Maguire, Francis McDormand, Katie Holmes, and Robert Downey Jr. That does not look like Francis McDormand. Is that Francis McDormand? I don't know. <laughs> they definitely chose a shot that does not look like her, if that is the case. Again, this is just a poster of just generic people looking at things, but Wonder Boys had a very unfortunate poster campaign, to be honest. It doesn't really tell you an awful lot about the movie, aside from who stars in it. A really terrible design, though, was the second one sheet for when they re-released the movie back in theatres, I think, to try and capitalise on its award nominations. And the poster was a picture of Michael Douglas posed from the movie. And he just looks like Mrs. Doubtfire. It's really awful. It's a really awful poster that we're no way entice anyone to actually watch the movie. <laughs> the Patriot. The Roland Emmerich movie, not to be confused with the Steven Seagal film of the same name. Again, this is a poster that's uh, very much is evocative of the time of the these movies in that you could sell a movie entirely on its star power because this is literally the classic giant head poster. Just two-thirds of the design are just Mel Gibson's face. And here's someone carrying a tattered American flag on the back of their horse. Just to give you some indication of what the film might vaguely be about. But, you know, you don't need to say anything else other than that. At least in 2000, when Mel Gibson was one of the biggest stars in the world and hadn't disgraced himself yet by being a horrible bigot. Now, this is another movie I've not seen. Uh, Bicentennial Man, Robin Williams, in one robot's 200-year journey to become an ordinary man. This is directed by Chris Columbus of Home Alone and Harry Potter fame. Spoiler alert, he does succeed, uh, as you can probably hint from the fact that uh, they've got a little slither of his face there. I believe it happens fairly late into the movie that he actually becomes Robin Williams, Robin Williams, as opposed to Robin Williams in the in the suit here that takes the, the majority of the design. But I, that's it's a nice, very simple image that puts across the premise of the film. You've got the... Kind of two sides, the human and the robot. Mission Impossible 2. That's pretty much the iconic design. And again, it's one of those posters that says, it doesn't matter what the film is. It's Mission Impossible 2. It's got Tom Cruise in it. Go and see it. There'll be explosions because there's fire and stuff. Directed by John Woo. Of course, I reviewed this back in the day. Uh, it's not very good. It's my least favourite of the Mission Impossible movies. No team element here. It's all about Tom Cruise. I mean, I guess the, the poster is fitting in that regard. Okay, so our next poster is Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, Together for Life. This is, again, a poster that tells you nothing about the movie, aside from the fact that they're maybe wearing vaguely period clothing, but they're not going to be wearing those for long because this is a prison movie. This is a comedy version of the Shawshank Redemption. I don't know why we needed something like that, but we got it nevertheless. Not even an allusion here to the fact that it's set in a prison, except for maybe the tagline and the obvious one of the title, The Skulls. A secret society so powerful can give you everything you desire, 
at a price. Joshua Jackson, Paul Walker, this is loosely based on real societies, I believe, but then taken to an absolutely ludicrous extreme. They have uh, skulls burnt on their wrist to signify their membership. Road trip, the greatest car tradition of them all. So this is, again, a good example of a movie that does not work these days. But of course, the big appeal of this movie, as you can probably tell by the design, is Tom Green. Inexplicably popular at the time. Inexplicably popular. I don't know why, but uh, he was definitely a thing. Obviously, very prominent placement for Stifler, Sean William Scott there, capitalising on his American Pie success. Hey, you remember that movie, right? It's like this. That's exactly what they're doing. I really love how, um, I don't know if this comes up on camera very well, but just how lazy the uh, super embossing of the uh, road trip on, uh, on Tom Green's palm is there. It ain't good. <laughs> Our next one is another movie I've not seen called The Watcher. James Spader and Keanu Reeves and Marissa Tomei. Keanu Reeves made a verbal agreement to star in this movie, but he didn't want to. Uh, he basically had to do it because of legal reasons, which is why his name is in very small font there. They've tried to minimize how much Keanu Reeves is in the movie, although he was the big selling point. It's like, Keanu Reeves, he's playing a serial killer, uh, but they don't use his face on the poster for obvious reasons, but they were very upfront, like, this, it's Keanu Reeves, he's the bad guy, he's the bad guy. Oh, here's another obscurity for you. Rachel Weisz and Susan Lynch in Beautiful Creatures, Dorothy and Petulia both have a boy to die for. It's not theirs. I have a copy of this movie on DVD. I have not watched it. Uh, the premise of this movie is they kill one of their abusive boyfriends and then they have to try and cover it up and they stage it as a kidnapping. Hannibal breaks the silence. This is the teaser poster technically for Hannibal, but I think this was the only one they actually properly used. So this is just basically all you need to know about the movie. It's about Hannibal Lecter. It's a sinister shot of Anthony Hopkins with a red eye. I uh, don't think he has a red eye in the movie, but it, it sure makes him look scary. The main poster is a real rarity. I doubt you'd be able to find it these days. Uh, I've only seen it in a very low-res photograph, and it's... It's, it, I believe it was a, an image that was deemed too shocking for the public. Uh, it was very quickly withdrawn because it played off the infamous moments in Science of the Lambs where he rips the guard's face off. So this ended up being the main poster design. And I think this was the only design that they used uh, in America. Charlie's Angels. This is, of course, the 2000 reboot with Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. Extremely 2000s. The first one is at least watchable. The second one is not. 102 Dalmatians. This is the teaser design for that. Uh, Glenn Close reprising her role as Cruella Duvel. A spotless new tale is going to be unleashed. Cruella gets out of prison. She's been seemingly rehabilitated. But then it turns out that the psychiatrist's uh, mental blocks on her all go away when Big Ben chimes, which seems like a major oversight, considering that happens quite a lot. Obviously not right now, because they're working on Big Ben. But still, that is a major oversight for that psychologist. You are bad at your job. You are bad at your job. The Mexican. Julia Roberts, Brad Pitt, when they were a couple? Uh, love with the safety off. It's again one of those posters that is entirely about the star power of the leads. And you have them in this romantic embrace together, laughing. Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts are barely in it together throughout the majority of the running time, and they spend a lot of it arguing. They're a bickering couple in it, so this is not really representative of the movie, but it implies that there's something romantic going on, doesn't it? Ah, uh, the iconic teaser poster for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, as it was called in the UK. It wasn't called the Sorcerer's Stone, the Philosopher's Stone, the correct title. And it's got the uh, the owl delivering the uh, lair to Hogwarts. Yeah, that's a good iconic poster design that tells you everything you need to know. And I'm pretty sure that if you were a kid at the time growing up with these movies, that would have been incredibly exciting. And of course, that brings us on to the main one, the main quad design for the movie, Journey Beyond Your Imagination. Bit of an odd design, this. Uh, the one-sheet design is better because the characters are better placed. In particular, Harry Potter there is very oddly shuffled off to the side, uh, Daniel Radcliffe. And uh, in the main design, he gets very prominent placement 
at the centre of the poster there. Alan Rickman has more of a prominent placement, I would argue, than uh, Daniel Radcliffe does there, even though they've tried to make him the biggest prominent figure in the poster there, but it doesn't really work. It's all a bit too scattered. Along Came a Spider, the game is far from over. This is the second of two adaptations made by Paramount of the Alex Cross books, which are extremely popular. This is directed by Lee Tamahori. There is an early sequence where someone is riding in a car with a suspect. She shoots him in the leg and the car crashes into the bridge in the most ludicrous display of CGI physics possible and just goes in this continuous shot and the and the s criminal that she's carrying gets flung out of the car down this dam Aah! and then the car is suspended on the side of this dam and it's it's ridiculous it's awful it's completely it's completely terrible okay so this is the uk quad design very battered looking i apologize for this for the general's daughter with john travolta to find the truth follow the lies i believe if i remember correctly the internet movie poster awards voted this the worst poster of 1999. It's obviously trying to make it look action-packed, but it looks very cheap. The poses don't make sense. John Travolta is investigating with a flashlight while there's a jeep behind him and there's helicopters. Her murder was just the beginning. I think the one sheet for this was just a very generic stock shot of uh, John Travolta in a military uniform with the flag over his face. And they deemed that probably not being very suitable for international design, so they tried to make it more action-y. You can definitely tell that, that was what they were trying to do, and uh, it's just not a very good design. Oh, and they've got the uh, <laughs> swooping on the letters there. Ah, The Grinch. You better watch out. That's the teaser poster for The Grinch uh, with the shattered bauble. I remember seeing the teaser trailer for it in front of a movie. I think it might have been The Road to El Dorado or something. And I remember genuinely being quite scared by it because the teaser trailer avoids showing his face for so long and then it reveals it in the slow motion shot of him smiling towards camera like this. And it scared the crap out of me because of the makeup. But I ended up loving the movie when it eventually came out. When I got adjusted to Jim Carrey's face right there. Uh, this is the main poster. I think this came out on my birthday in 2000, 1st December. 2000. Oh, on the back here, there's uh, puzzles. Did I fill them out here? I think I have actually filled them out. Yeah, I have actually done the dot to dots. <laughs> oh, bless me. Okay, Save the Last Dance with Julia Stiles and Sean Patrick Thomas. Not seen it. It's a dance movie. But you could probably get that by the fact that it's a shot of her dancing and there's a romantic pose between them. The only person you need to be is yourself. Good advice. Good, solid advice. Chris Rock, a story of premature reincarnation. Ooh, cheeky tagline there for Down to Earth, which is a remake of Heaven Can Wait, which had already been previously remade by Warren Beatty. Right, Evolution. This is the teaser poster with the fairly iconic three-eyed smiley. I believe it's, uh, yeah, they've got a, they've got a, Adapted from Smiley, which is a registered trademark. Da, 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 da. The teaser trailer for this was actually surprisingly dark. It featured an astronomer uh, looking up at the stars, and then an asteroid hits him, and the crater has this bubbling yellow nucleus inside of it that forms into that film's logo, which is where the logo for the movie comes from. It's a good iconic image. It kind of says, hey, it's about the end of the world, and it's about aliens. It's a very basic but very distinct image that helps sell the movie, which of course stars David Duchovny in it, but you don't need to know that. It's got aliens in it. So this is technically not a poster, but I don't think I ever punched it out because it could technically work that way. This is from the mirror. Make your Shrek mask. <laughs> Tear your Shrek mask along the perforated lines. There are perforated lines along here. Pop out the holes for his eye, oh, for the holes around his ears and eyes. It's a punch out face mask that you had to tie string around, but uh, I didn't do that. So I just kept it as it was with all the perforations. Final Fantasy, unleash a new reality. Final Fantasy, the spirits within, uh, as it's more accurately known, but they just decided to put massively Final Fantasy and redundantly put the title beneath it. The problem is that it's ostensibly a Final Fantasy movie. And I know Final Fantasy as a game series, 
is different things, but they were all kind of fantasy related. This is a very sci-fi angle and has nothing to do with the RPG elements of the games whatsoever. <laughs> you know, a knight's tale, he will rock you. Now, if you recently saw the documentary I Am Heath Ledger, you probably already know about this poster in particular. Heath Ledger was in the marketing meeting and they presented him with the headshot poster. This is a poster that pretty much tells you virtually nothing about the movie, except maybe it's set in medieval times because he's a knight, and it stars Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, uh, Sony considered to be the hidden weapon of the movie, and they banked on his charisma. But unfortunately, uh, this was probably the, the signifier for Heath that he did not want to become a traditional leading man. He did not want to be the guy that had huge posters that were entirely made up of his face, as he is here. And apparently in the marketing meeting, as they were describing how they were going to put him at the forefront and how they were going to push him out there in interviews constantly to promote the movie, uh, apparently at that point, uh, Ledger had to leave because he was getting serious anxiety. It's a poster that tells more of a story than you would think. A very teeny tiny mini poster for Recess, School's Out, the spin-off, and they have changed the background, so it's a Union Jack, saving the world one playground at a time. Yep, that is something that they really did when they released this movie. They re The poster design really did replace the background with a Union Jack. Did the, did the original design have the stars and stripes on it? Maybe it did, and... But that seems like overcompensation. It's not set in the UK. That makes no sense. Exclusive mini poster compliments of Mega Bowl. Didn't get this from a cinema. Came from a bowling alley that had a tie-in with the movie. Recess School's out. Yes, I did see that in theatres. We're back to American Pie now. Two versions of American Pie 2, the poster. And this is a good example of how they redesign elements for the uh, quad design the one sheet. Same design, different positions. And one of them has the 15 certificate rating there, if you look very closely. Uh, this one doesn't. I collected these at two separate times. But yeah, basically a good idea of how they would rearrange images to make them accommodate the wider frame here. And I think that this uh, character image works better here than it does on the one sheet. Crazy beautiful. When it's real, when it's right, don't let anything stand in your way. We will move very quickly on. The Last Castle, with Robert Redford, James Gandolfini, Mark Ruffalo, and Delroy Lindo. A castle can only have one king. I believe this is the second design for this movie. I believe this was the only one they used internationally. The original design for the poster was uh, an image of the American flag uh, being raised upside down, which is crucial to the climax of that movie. Uh, but this movie was originally set to be released around the time of 9-11, so they quickly withdrew that poster for obvious reasons, uh, and this is what they replaced it with, with their big dramatic sort of action shot with the helicopters and the heads floating above them. A Christmas Carol the movie for everyone who loved the snowman, with the voices of Simon Callow, Kate Winslet, and Nicolas Cage. Arguably, this is the most obscure Nicolas Cage movie of all time. I'm pretty sure that no one's aware that he was in a version of A Christmas Carol, let alone an animated film uh, with singing mice. Uh, he voices uh, Marley in it, uh, Jacob Marley. Uh, 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 Scrooge is voiced by Simon Callow, who is a big, big Shakespeare fan. I heard this version is bad. Really, really bad. 2D animated musical. You can probably tell from the poster that even the character designs are not especially inspired. Oh, and it has puzzles on the back. Jolly good. Didn't fill those in. Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Hollywood had it come in. Uh, I think the regular American one sheet was white, and this is, obviously, I changed it to yellow here. I love that the billing here is all over the place. Ben Affleck, Will Ferrell, and Jason Mewes right down there at the bottom, even though he's, you know, the star of the movie because he's playing Jay. I mean, Kevin Smith doesn't even get a billing on this poster, not even a directed credit, apart from in the credits block right here. The Others, this is a fairly standard design for The Others, and Nicole Kidman holding the lamp. Sooner or later, they'll find you. Uh, massive quote, just to let you know that it's a scary movie in spite of its 12 certificate rating right there. I think this design works, but again, it would work better in the one sheet design where Nicole Kidman would be prominent in it, as opposed to this one where she is sort of shuttled off to the side there. 
Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Of course, this is the Angelina Jolie film, the first of two that she did. And this is a not very good movie. Which brings us on to our next poster, Domestic Disturbance. He will do anything to protect his family. John Travolta and Vince Vaughn. Yes, Vince Vaughn is the bad guy. He's the new boyfriend who is actually abusive and has got mob ties. Atlantis, The Lost Empire, the Disney movie. This is the teaser poster for it. Nice big uh, sort of uh, scaled shot of the characters there in the corner on the cliff looking over at Atlantis surrounded by the waterfall uh, with the shape of the logo in the background there but it doesn't tell you very much about the movie nor does it look especially action-packed it's not a particularly memorable design it looks nice it's just a design that probably wouldn't pull me into seeing a movie you could probably understand why it uh, flops but i did see this film theatrically zoolander this is a good example of tailoring your designs for the quad design i think that in the u.s poster he had a different positioning and it was in front of a big z they positioned him here in front of the cloud which makes him kind of look a bit airheaded and stupid, which is suitably appropriate for Mr. Zoolander. Long Time Dead. This is a obscure British horror movie about a Ouija board. This is the teaser poster for it. It has lots of various different letterings scattered all over the shape of a mysterious evil figure, but occasionally has yes, no, uh, Long Time Dead illuminated through it, dare to play. And underneath it is the main poster for the same movie, Play It to Death. Uh, I believe that is a thing that actually happens in the movie where the characters get these kind of demonic looking eyes. Cats and dogs, Destiny is in their paws. This is going to be embarrassing. I've remembered this. I saw this back in the theatre and I, I got a bit emotional when they do the fake out where the dog seemingly dies. Bless me. Let's move on from that embarrassing anecdote to Rat Race. Very prominent placement there for Rowan Atkinson, as you would probably expect given that he was the big draw of the film over here. It's a big crazy wacky poster with lots of cutouts of the characters acting wild and crazy and for some reason they decide to very prominently place Wayne Knight even though he's not a main character in the movie technically speaking. He just rides along with Rowan Atkinson for a little bit. Whoopi Goldberg gets third billing. Nowhere on this poster. Nowhere to be seen. A Beautiful Mind, the Oscar winning movie with Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly. I like this shot here. I don't think they ever used it again, but it's a far more interesting shot. It's a definitely sort of inspirational kind of biopic kind of shot here of Jennifer Connelly sort of cradling and supporting Russell Crowe. Whereas a lot of the one sheet designs were essentially Russell Crowe's face looking at a board full of numbers. And that's, uh, it's a bit of a boring image, but uh, I suppose this image also feels quite generic in its own way. It doesn't really tell you about the mathematician side of the movie, the only thing greater than the power of the mind is the courage of the heart. The re-release of E.T., the 20th anniversary, never before seen footage, enhanced visual effects, newly remastered soundtrack, guns replaced with walkie-talkies that everyone hated. Another very bad confession to make. Never seen E.T. I have the Blu-ray of it somewhere, but not seen it. Uh... Yeah, feel free to be disappointed in me. I will watch it, but I won't be watching it in the 20th anniversary version, the one that Spielberg later went on to disown himself after self-sanitizing. Of course, has the uh, iconic shot of the bicycle against the moon there. Orange County. This took a long time to be released in the UK. I think it was almost a year after its US release, which even for 2002 was a very long time. Directed by Jake Kasdan, who went on to direct Jumanji, uh, Welcome to the Jungle and The Next Level. I mean, I like the poster of them with the oranges there, even though obviously oranges has virtually nothing to do with the actual movie itself. Although I will think it's weird that uh, Colin Hanks, there are cutouts where his eyes should be from where they've put the oranges over his eyes, and that's quite disconcerting. Of course, these two would be in the Jumanji movies. They would both reteam in those films. The Parole Officer. Steve Coogan's one of his very first uh, film outings. Lena Headey there, not looking like Lena Headey. Unarguably the greatest film ever made, says Alan Partridge. Nice to have a Partridge quote on the poster. I just caught this, by the way. Warning, this poster may contain nuts. On the back of the DVD or the video cover, they actually had quotes from other Steve Coogan characters as well, but... Uh... Uh, I can't remember them offhand, and let's face it, Alan Partridge is the only one anyone actually remembers. Monsters, Inc. Meet the Screen Team. A treat. It's fantastic. Got Empire and Total Film recommendations on there. Uh, again, typical 
for the style of the time in that, like the Toy Story 2 poster we looked at earlier, group shot the characters, set against white, it's a Pixar film. The Capital FM must-see movie. I always go to Capital FM to look for my movie recommendations. Oh, stuck together a little bit. Nope, nope, there is definitely several stuck together. Tense moment there for We Were Soldiers with Mel Gibson in this really unclear shot that has far too much shadow over his face, so you can't actually tell that it's Mel Gibson unless they told you it was Mel Gibson. Oh, another Capital FM must-see movie. Uh, Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. And so we got Jimmy Neutron and his robot dog flying up into the air, and there's some staining from where my cat, with her muddy feet, dived across the poster. Bless. Yep, there's puzzles on the back of it. Very common feature of kids' film posters that they give away. They have those little activity sheets on the back, as I believe that they like to call them. Return to Neverland, the deeply uninspiring sequel to Peter Pan that I think was one of those movies that was intended to direct a video and then someone at Disney said, let's release those in theatres. I'm sure it'll be fine. It was not fine. They were bad and shouldn't have been in theatres. Now we're on to the notorious Crossroads with Britney Spears, one of her very few movies, especially in a starring outing, uh, with Kim Cattrall and Dan Aykroyd in it. Uh, Zoe Saldana there before she was famous as well. This was not a very good movie and I have never seen it. Now we move on to Bend It Like Beckham, hilariously fresh and funny. This is the best British comedy since Bridget Jones's Diary, says the gossip columnist at the Daily Mail who likes to get his name all over the posters that I'm not going Going to mangle any more than I have to. Kira Knightley there in a star making role here, or at least the first of them. The real star of the movie is really Parminda Nagra, who managed to get right off the back of this into a starring gig on ER. Uh, congratulations for her. Snow Dogs from a producer of George of the Jungle and the director of Beethoven. I have a story about Snow Dogs. I did a cross country run and I was quite a unfit asthmatic, quite portly kid. I finished way behind everyone else, but I was looking forward to seeing Ocean's Eleven on VHS tape. Unfortunately, Blockbuster had some kind of dispute with Warner Home Video and were not stocking their titles, so my mum rented me Snow Dogs instead. <laughs> my reward was that, and uh, not a good reward. <laughs> The Rock in The Scorpion King, Warrior Legend King. Weird blue tint to the poster, which does not fit the movie very well. Inexplicably, though, has launched a very, very long-running franchise of direct-to-video sequels, none of which feature Dwayne Johnson in them. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. The longer it goes, the harder it gets. From the producers of Bridget Jones's Diary. Imagine giving up sex and falling in love on the same day. Josh Hartnett, who I think his hair is much longer there than it is in the movie. I think in the movie it's quite kind of closely cropped. It's not that hairstyle right there. I remember when my school had a leavers do. Uh, they had standees from the from the cinema because it was movie themed. And one of them was 40 Days and 40 Nights. And obviously one of them caught the fact that the tagline says, imagine giving up sex and falling in love on the same day. And what they did, they plastered over the word sex and just filled it in with the word school. Imagine giving up school and falling in love on the same day. <laughs> Hardball with Keanu Reeves in a place where all bets are off. He's got nothing to lose. Okay. So we've got two versions of the same poster here. This is the poster for Spider-Man. This is actually a fold-out from a magazine. It's a fold-out from one of those uh, magazines that they give out in cinema foyers. Oh, it has an interview with Tobey Maguire. My first big break was two lines in a Rodney Dangerfield special that got me into the Actors Union. I was 13. What an amazing story, Toby. The Cineworld used to have these centerfolds that you could kind of lift out as a freebie poster and so that's what I did. Uh, you can see the punch holes right there from where it used to be. So this is the teaser design and this is the slightly modified final design. Uh, you can tell the actual poster has much stronger colours on it as well as having a soundtrack promo in the corner and also the infamous 12 certificate rating on it. Contains some scenes of strong fancy violence. That was the reason why they gave it the 12 rating back at the time. This is a good example of the consumer advice that the BBFC added to posters and the like, especially around this time when they made that much more of a standard feature on posters and 
It's a bit of a shame that that's disappeared because a lot of posters are made before the films are rated so they can't include the ratings on them. Moving on now, Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, one of the few short-lived 2D animated films that DreamWorks put out. From the producers that brought you Shrek comes a movie that isn't CG animation. Oh, it has an activity sheet on the back that I don't care about. Minority Reports, this is the teaser poster for that. As you can tell by the scene line, uh, it, it is another magazine fold-out from Cineworld. Oh, Stan Lee interview. I think this is a pose of him underwater, because obviously there's that sequence where he has his eyes replaced, and he's got the bandage around it. I quite like this teaser poster. This year, everybody runs. It's a nice take on the big head poster, but in a way that doesn't make it, you know, like Tom Cruise's massive head. Luckily, they fixed that with the next one. They fixed that with the next poster. Big Fat Liar, Frankie Muniz, Paul Giamatti, Amanda Mines. I remember when the movie came out on video, they changed Paul Giamatti here so that he was big, blue and screaming because he gets turned into a blue man at one point. Oh, I have two versions of it. Again, a good example of how they've changed the design to tailor it for the quad and the one sheet here. They've cut off Frankie Muniz and Amanda Bynes here and they've pushed back Paul Giamatti. I think, again, this design works better in this one sheet perspective than it does on here, but I don't think there's too much loss between them, you know? Well, notably, this one, the quad, does not have the tagline. Two friends are about to cut one Hollywood big shot down to size. Men in Black 2, Back in Black. I've covered it before on Bad Movie Beatdown. You know my feelings on this. Resident Evil, Miliovich and Michelle Rodriguez. The first one's all right. I didn't venture any further because I heard that they were worse. Stuart Little 2, this summer, a little goes a long way. It's, it's cute, it's likeable. And that's exactly what this poster encompasses. A bigger colouring sheet of Stuart kicking the football there as well, before I forget. And we move on to Scooby-Doo, a hero rise on four legs. I think this is a unique design for the UK, this quad design. You can very vaguely see Rowan Atkinson there at the back. I think this is a good design. I think th this, uh, Gets all the characters, gets the vibe. Clock Stoppers, what if you had the power to stop time? This is the movie with uh, Jesse Bradford, uh, Freeze the Future. It's about a clock that doesn't freeze time, it slows down time, technically. You don't stop time, you're technically moving actually very, very fast. I like that that kid is on there as a prominent character, except he's not a kid. Turns out he was way older than that at the time of filming. But he's not a prominent character in the movie, he's just a minor supporting player. It's very weird. Crikey! Steve Irwin, The Crocodile Hunter Collision Course. Remember, he got a movie out of that, remember? Oh, there's a colouring sheet version on the back as well. You know what I do remember from Collision Course? The teaser trailer for it. He steps in front of the MGM logo and talks to the MGM lion and then replaces Leo the lion with a crocodile. He's been sitting this MGM logo for 77 years. Tough job, mate. <sighs> That's a thing I remember. Talk to her, the Pedro Almodovar movie. Pedro Almodovar is very lucky in terms of foreign language filmmakers in that his films tend to get big wide theatrical releases. This, I think, was quite well received at the time. I never actually saw it. I'm saying that, though, because there's loads and loads of quotes around the poster. Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams, contains mild comic violence. Spy Kids Rules, says Heat Magazine. Oh, yeah. At least it's not as bad as Spy Kids 3. Spy Kids 3 is quite bad. Reign of Fire, this is another fold-out, as you can see, uh, from Cineworld Magazine. Oh man, Pluto Nash, a feature for Nicolas Cage there on the other side. There will always be people saying I'm a raving lunatic. However, I worked very hard at being exciting and dangerous, but it was only an image I was trying to generate. Sure, Nick, sure. I'm sure he's a lovely person in real life. I've heard, uh, I, I've heard he's great. They're extremely intelligent, highly evolved, and they don't like sharing the planet. Reign of Fire. This has a great poster of dragons ravaging London, and you've got helicopters flying around. Sadly, this is an image that's not actually in the movie. This is a key example of lies on the poster. Most of it is just them hunkering down in a castle and trying to fend off dragons, and it's a bit boring, to be honest. Jackass the movie with stuff you'd never see on TV. Uh, I did see this when it was on television, ironically. <laughs> All the cast there going away from an explosion in a trolley, which I think is actually something that happens in the movie, and then after the credits, they're all dressed up in old man outfits, and they all die reenacting it, which is it's amusing. Signs. Oh, this is a good example of put all the quotes on the poster, rating advice on there. Uh, Blockbuster with Brain says Q Magazine, utterly engrossing, 
see it, see it, see it, says Paul Ross, News of the World. <laughs> oh man, Paul Ross, uh, Jonathan Ross's uh, even less respected brother, who is very well known for providing a hacky quote line if people required it. And again, all the quotes taking up half the poster, so you have to shuttle off Mel Gibson into the corner there. Swim fan, it's murder getting the man you want. Hold your breath. As I understand it, it's basically fatal attraction for teens. And with swimming, massive heads, swimming. I don't think there's anything more to be said about that. K-19, The Widowmaker, Catherine Bigelow movie that almost no one saw with Harrison Ford's massive head, but not Liam Neeson's. It's mostly Harrison Ford is in this movie. Go see it. Harrison Ford's in it. And he's doing his Russian accent. And it sounds a bit like he's doing Chekhov from Star Trek. Red Dragon, the main poster for this, the first and most terrifying chapter in the Hannibal Lecter trilogy. This is Brett Ratner's remake of Manhunter, starring uh, Edward Norton. This is a pretty uninspired poster. I feel like this design works better here, with Anthony Hopkins here, and Ed Norton there than it does on the one sheet where Ed Norton is at the bottom and it's mostly Anthony Hopkins' massive head. I feel like that being bigger and having more prominence makes sense considering he's the main character of the movie and they've just massively expanded out Anthony Hopkins' role because, you know, Hannibal Lecter, big popular at the time. The tuxedo, Jackie Chan, Jennifer Love Hewitt. He's not looking for trouble, he's wearing it. Remember this one? Jackie Chan wears a tuxedo, a spy tuxedo given to him by Jason Isaacs that gives him fighting abilities. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is another magazine fold-out. This is the teaser design for it. We're just wild about Harry. I was not. That's my stomach. I'm quite hungry. Dobby has come to warn you, sir. Toby Jones playing Dobby. I remember Dobby was a very big deal when this movie came out because obviously he was a CG character when that was relatively rare. And they put Dobby all over the promotional campaign. He's not actually in the movie all that much. The point where I think people got a little bit sick of him after a while. Now we have 28 Days Later. This is technically not a poster. This is a fold-out that was given away to promote the movie. Uh, you'll notice that the design here is actually slightly different because normally it's just Killian Murphy there at the bottom on his own, whereas actually you've got a shadow there of Naomi Harris as well. But that's the slight difference there. On the inside of it, you've got a synopsis, you've got some actor profiles as well. Irish actor Killian Murphy first made his mark with his stunning performance in the award-winning stage version of Disco Pigs. Obviously, you have to remember the time that most of this cast was fairly unknown. Inside of it here is a prequel comic, actually. This feels incredibly awkward right now, I'm not gonna lie. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I knew that this was in here, but uh, I forgot that this, that this stuff was here. It kind of gives you this sort of prequel to what goes on in the movie, and at the bottom there you've got Killian Murphy saying, Hello! Hello! On the back there, be thankful for everything, for soon there will be nothing. Uh... Let's be a little bit more optimistic, shall we? Another magazine fold out here, The Born Identity. This is the first 12A movie officially, the first film that was released after the 12A was introduced. Oh, and on the other side, little profile Matt Damon as well. Five months of training, is that all day, every day? Yes, but for the talented Mr. Ripley, I was stuck in a room playing piano for months, so I sort of preferred this. Yeah. Another magazine fold-out is the teaser poster for Die Another Day with the smoking Walter PPK in the melting ice. Very good shot there. Actually, is that magazine? No, it's not. I'm incorrect. It was a giveaway with the mail on Sunday. And on the other side, is the main design. But that's far less interesting because as you can probably see, I have a freebie poster of the main design as well. And it's exactly the same, although the printing quality varies between them. I actually have three versions. Why do I have three? Gone bonkers. As you probably may know though, as I have covered it previously, Die Another Day is, uh, how can we put this? Not very good. Anita and Me. Mira Sayal's movie, she co-stars in it. She also wrote the screenplay. I don't really have much to say about this film, unfortunately, because I have not seen it. But so many recognisable British faces all over the poster. Sanjeev Bhaskar, Mira Sayal's husband, of course, in the movie. Mark Williams. Omid Jalili. Uh, Kathy Burke there. But of course, outside of the UK, you don't know who the hell any of those people are. Reese Witherspoon is Sweet Home Alabama. Sometimes what you're looking for is right where you left it. Standard rom-com fair. Standard rom-com fair. Chicago, but a character poster actually. This is Richard Gere as Billy Flynn. I think this is just the only one they had. So here is Chicago with neither of the two actual leads, but the male lead. <laughs> it's a nice strong poster the way that he's standing in front of the neon lit sea. That's nice, but you know, 
It's a character poster completely out of context. Makes you think, oh, it's a Richard Gere movie. It's not. It's not, but you know, that's what character posters do. They highlight characters. The Wild Thornberrys movie, and again, two of them for some reason. I wasn't even a fan of the Wild Thornberrys in association with WWF, not the World Wrestling Federation. By that point, I think they had changed their name. Contains mild peril. There were lots of kids' movies that contained mild peril at the time, and the BBC got a lot of flack because mild peril is an inherently ridiculous phrase. I believe they changed the wording afterwards to, uh, contains scary scenes. That's how they usually used to phrase it after people mocked it. I believe Finding Nemo in particular was contains mild peril. Activity sheet on the back. Catch me if you can, the Steven Spielberg movie. The true story of a real fake. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, that is Leonardo DiCaprio being chased by Tom Hanks. Very well put by the poster, which uh, has them blurred chasing after each other. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that is not actually Leonardo DiCaprio or Tom Hanks. That is body doubles that they are very heavily blurred. Blue Crush, surfing movie with Kate Bosworth and Michelle Rodriguez. Take the risk, feel the rush. Shanghai Nights. Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson reteaming. Apparently leaping to their deaths from the top of Big Ben. I believe the American version of this had them in front of the Union Jack, but they very uh, oddly decide to change it. Maybe they decide that that was a bit kind of weirdly nationalistic for a British release, so they just replaced it with Big Ben. Treasure Planet, the infamous bust for Disney. Find your place in the universe. Massive crease in the poster. How to lose a guy in 10 days. Kate Hudson, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, you can win a makeover in Milan. Radio 1 Movie of the Month. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that that wasn't when Mark Kermo was doing that anymore. I forgot to mention the back of the poster for How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days actually includes the universal don'ts of dating and the day by day things that you should not do. Like, uh, name is Willie. Staking a claim on his privates will make you feel in control, especially when you tell his mates the next day, move your possessions into his bedroom. Call him constantly. Cry for no reason. Cry during sex. Keep on crying until he realizes the relationship is serious. Oh my god! Discuss your relationship at length, all through the football. It must be bloody tedious having to watch all that kicking around. You can tell this is tailored towards the UK release. Burn his Kylie calendar. You should be enough for him. Leave an ovulation test beside his toothbrush. Ask if he thinks you look fat. Turn up at his boys' night out. Make his mum your new best friend. She knows everything. And finally, if he hasn't proposed by day 10, he probably has intimacy issues. Go to the nearest bar, find a new guy, and start back at number one. Ooh. <laughs> So, uh, if a guy hasn't proposed to you by day 10 because you're doing all this stuff, it's because you're emotionally manipulative and crazy, and they should probably, uh, make sure to just do the nuclear option and never associate with you again, um, and run for the hills. Run. We should move on very swiftly to old school. Now, this is an international design, as you can probably tell. It's very uh, tailored towards the quad here. You've got the ladies looking absolutely shocked. Why do men act like boys? Because they can! The way that you've got the the hand, which I'm gonna take a guess here, is not actually her hand. It very much reminds me of um, the poster for Road Trip that we were talking about earlier, which was also directed by Todd Phillips. The poster design is very different to the American one, which just sort of has them doing fraternity antics. Uh, Will Ferrell's in the same pose as the US poster. Luke Wilson is in a different pose. Shh. X-Men 2. This is a magazine fold-out. I can very easily tell. Disney big time. If you don't remember that, because you didn't grow up in the UK, Disney had a magazine and they would do, you know, activities for kids. You've got an advert for Rugrats here, promoting Nicktoons TV. On the other side, you've got, I guess, a sort of poster for Jackie Chan Adventures. But in the middle here, you've got one of the quad designs for X-Men 2 with some of the characters, Storm, Cyclops, Mystique, uh, Wolverine, and the big watermark in the corner. Here is the other quad design that they put out for this. Uh, also a fold-out from Disney Big Time Magazine with Nightcrawler, Rogue, Iceman, and Lady Deathstrike. Uh, you've also got a promo here for uh, the Lizzie McGuire Wire soundtrack. Ooh, nostalgia for some people. A limited edition jungle rhythm drum to tie in with Jungle Book 2 when you buy Anchor Spreadable. I think I will not get that. Thank you very much. Kangaroo Jack. He stole the money. He's not giving it back. I'm pretty sure the uh, US design is just Kangaroo Jack here and they've added the uh, human characters on this quad design because they got more space. 
Why not? Why not? I have never seen Kangaroo Jack. I have heard of its infamous reputation. Agent Cody Banks. Again, two of these, and they've got an uh, activity sheet on the back, premise and synopsis. Uh, Frankie Munez as a junior spy. Save the world, get the girl, pass maths. Look like they've tweaked the tagline there, pass maths. I'm pretty sure on the US poster it was pass math. In the UK, we call it maths, not math. Uh, we, we shorten it from mathematics to and keep the S on the end of it. And that is a very small nuance. I think these three here, I think they were giveaways with a magazine of some kind. I can't remember which one. So we got Charlie's Angels Full Throttle here. That is the teaser poster where she's doing the two with her fingers. Yep, that's definitely not Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. Lara Croft Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. Again, this is the teaser poster for that. And finally, a poster for the TX from Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. And weirdly enough, in the UK, it was released with a 12A certificate, but in America got an R rating. And while on the subject of Terminator, here is the quad for Terminator 3. With that 12A rating, contains strong language and violence, and you've got Arnie on top and Kristana Loken as a TX on the bottom. Not a very inspired design. Why put it like this when you could put them there and there? and put the title big there. I'm not saying that uh, that Sony couldn't have done a better job here. I'm just saying that maybe they could have done a version without huge swaths of black empty space on the poster that would have been much more eye-catching. But that's just me. Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, this is a card, I think. And I reviewed this way back when. It's... Yeah, it, it ain't very good at all, is it? Is it? No. And this is... Yes, that's not actually a poster. That is, I guess, an activity sheet. But guess what? I have two of them. And it's various character profiles. And the teaser for Finding Nemo. There are 3.7 trillion fish in the ocean. Uh, asterisk. They're looking for one. And the reason there is an asterisk on the end of that tagline? Actually, no one can ever know exactly how many fish there are in the ocean. According to some sources, the real number is probably closer to between one and four quadrillion. We just wanted to emphasize the boatload of fish that live in the world's oceans, and one fish's incredible quest to find his lost son. If you think you know the actual number, we'd like to know too. Contact us at findingnemo.com. I bet that domain doesn't exist anymore, or maybe it does, and it just links to Pixar's website. I'm not going to find out, just in case. And this is, of course, the main poster for it, which emphasizes Bruce the shark there. I like on the teaser design actually, especially in this version where you've got a lot more space to play with how empty uh, it is around uh, Marlin there. But of course this is the much more broadly comic eye-catching version of it and they decide to not place the characters on white, which is a nice change for a Pixar poster. Extreme Ops! Fear is a trigger! The extreme sports trend! in full force, starring Devon Sauer of Final Destination fame, and Rufus Sewell, who was probably regressing his agent at that time. Too Fast, Too Furious, how fast do you like it? This is one that has all the characters on it. What's up, dog? The Rugrats meet the Wild Thornberries. That's definitely not the title of the movie as that was released. That's how you know that this is the teaser poster for what was actually released as Rugrats Go Wild. Spike speaks soon. And of course, the big pull was Bruce Willis voice Spike. I don't quite know how that happened, but it did. The remake of The Italian Job. Get in, get out, get even. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Now, Cat in the Hat. Don't mess with the hats. This is the international teaser poster because they did a whole new campaign because this was released months after it was in the States. And I remember the, the two campaigns were very different. Uh, the international teaser, of which this is a reference to, there is no footage in the international teaser trailer, none whatsoever. It's just basically a bunch of characters trying to grab the hat and then slowly the cat pulls himself outside of the hat. And now here is the file design, which is much more recognizable to people, again with Mike Myers, and sort of hiding his face a little bit because they realized the makeup was god awful. American Pie the Wedding, or simply American Wedding. Internationally, they could get away with still using the American Pie name because, of course, Don McLean sued them for using American Pie as a title. So that's why American Reunion, it's just simply American Pie Reunion. I forgot that I had the trilogy of the American Pie movies. Look, it's kind of rude on the poster and he's got the pie instead of a cake. Good boy, oh good. I've got this twice. This is a, a talking dog movie, and that one's 
voiced by Matthew Broderick. And there's an activity sheet on the back, released just in time for Christmas on December 19th. Calendar Girls. A uh, good example of the just plaster the hell out of it with quotes right here. Just all of it. Most enchanting British picture in years. See Calendar Girls tonight. Well, I suppose I could drop everything and watch Calendar Girls tonight, but... I don't really plan on it. Freaky Friday, another UK specific design, I think. They've always been in each other's faces today, they're in each other's bodies. People complain about movie posters not lining up the actors' names. The reason that is, is purely for billing reasons, but that doesn't necessarily align with the design that they're going for, so that's why you get mismatched posters. It, it's not really that big of a deal, but it, it definitely annoys some people's OCD. In this case, they've actually made good use of it, because of course, Jamie Lee Curtis, Lindsay Lohan, but over the wrong bodies, but that makes sense because they're swapping. That's actually a fairly clever use of that particular trope, I guess. I think this is just me cutting stuff out of cinema magazines. No, no, it's not. Oh, this is another magazine fold out, but on the back of it, we got one for Thunderpants. Do you remember that one from the producer of The Borrowers, Robert Grint from Harry Potter? It's about a kid that farts a lot. Yep, 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 yep. On the inside of this, we got a fold-out Disney big-time poster for Star Wars, Attack of the Clones, got uh, Anakin and Padme uh, posing there. On the back of it, Top Trumps, man, Top Trumps. Buffy, Angel, Simpsons, Lord of the Rings, all flavors of Top Trumps. Angela Anaconda Top Trumps. No one wants that. <laughs> Are these just cutouts from the cinema magazine? And they are. You know, they have um, just pages where they just devote it to space for promoting movies. And uh, this is a cutout, very badly cutout, for Runaway Jury, the John Grisham adaptation. Enough twist to keep you gripped with excellent central performances. I'll take their word for it. Three DVDs for £20. Remember when that was a thing that they used to charge for DVDs? Choices Direct. They don't exist anymore. Cabin Fever. Terrifying, original and brilliant, scary as hell. Mon horror classic. Talk about overly raving this. And on the back, House of a Thousand Corpses. How appropriate as well. Oh, look, there's Rain Wilson as a fish man uh, spoiling his face in the movie. American Splendor with Paul Giamatti. There's a comic book style uh, design there. I like that. After the Hulk, Spider-Man X-Men, a comic book hero that we can all relate to. I have not seen American Splendor. In Total Cruelty, I did go and see in cinemas. This was the first design of it. I remember the second design was a really awful one where it was just George Clooney and Catherine Zeta Jones in front of a barbed wire heart. That makes it sound better than that design actually was, but this one is just sort of a bit bland. A romantic comedy with bite. Not from this poster, you can tell. On the back of it, Equilibrium and Dark Blue on DVD. I think I had that copy of Equilibrium on uh, DVD when I reviewed it back in the day, and then people got very mad at me. Very mad. Ah, uh, the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I like the design of this. It's kind of spooky and scary and sinister and takes advantage of the leather face being creepy as all hell. And a free bath toy when you buy a munch box at UGC Cinemas for Finding Nemo. Ah, this is, must have been cut out from the UGC Cinemas magazine when they existed before they got bought out by Cineworld. Something's got to give. Again, another post that tells you nothing about the movie, just sort of smiling and happy. The Dreamers, the Bernardo Bertolucci movie with Eva Green. Ooh, a bit of nudity there in the background. Sexy and provocative, sort of hinting at it. Scary Movie 3. Great trilogies come in threes. Really prominent placement for Eddie Griffin and Queen Latifah there in their Matrix parody that was largely cut out of the movie. Or at least so I hear, I've never seen it. The teaser poster for The Matrix Revolutions, everything that has a beginning has an end. Another issue of Unlimited. It must have been a little phase I was having until I realised that it was kind of a bit ridiculous. Peter Pan. That's a teaser poster for that. The Last Samurai, where Tom Cruise was back towards the camera. Luckily they rectified that on the next poster, which is just basically Tom Cruise's massive head. Unlimited magazine, literally the same design both sides. Looney Tunes back in action. How do they solve a mystery when they don't have a clue? I was a big fan as a kid of Joe Dante because I was a nerd. So I went out and saw this movie and I was very happy I did. Oh, it's got an activity sheet on the back. You can trace in Bugs Bunny and I won't. It's a scream, the haunted mansion opening on Friday the 13th. Eddie Murphy badly comped in to the original teaser artwork, which is just the door slightly open. Oh, on the back of it, we've got uh, the Barbarian Invasions and Dogville, the Lars von Trier movie. Bit of an art house double bill there. But back to the Haunted Mansion, and this is, I think, the version that was mostly used around the UK, where instead they implemented Eddie Murphy as stone statues surrounding the Haunted Mansion. Come on in, it's a scream! 
He looks a bit vampire in Brooklyn on that one there. If you haven't seen Vampire in Brooklyn, I don't recommend it. It sucks. Ah! Oh, I still haven't finished cutting out bits from magazines. Doesn't really work with this one though, does it, young Matthew? No, because it's two separate ones for the same quad. 21 grams, super depressing movie, I've never seen it. A Mighty Wind, the uh, Christopher Guest movie. Who needs love when you can have Galaxy? A bit of shameless promotion there for Down With Love. House of Sand and Fog, a superior heartbreaking film. Some dreams can't be shared. Two versions of School of Rock here. This one has Jack Black rocking out in his school uniform there. And the kids are also in their final pose as well. Radio 1 Movie of the Month. But we've also got the quad poster as well with the more traditional design of Jack Black in his teacher's uniform there. Uh, Rolling Stone design is used under license from Rolling Stone. Good to know. Uh, they've even got the... Uh, Issues February 2004, £3.95. I definitely did not pay that much for this. We don't need an education. Oh, good reference there. Good reference. Now the big time fold out. Whoop. Oh, this is the UK one sheet design. You'll notice it's slightly different to the one that was used in many other places. It doesn't have a border around it for a start. It also very prominently places Kira Knightley there over Orlando Bloom a little bit, because obviously she was a big uh, star over here than she was in America. From the producer of Armageddon and Pearl Harbor. Uh, and on the opposite sides, we got little posters for Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley in it. Oh man. Tooth! The Tooth Fairy movie with Harry Enfield and Vinnie Jones. Oh, and Jim Broadbent voicing a guy in a terrible bunny costume. This movie is very bad. The sort of thing that you're amazed ever made it as a theatrical release. Colouring sheet on the back. Oh look, it's like the outlines. Ugh. Along came Polly. For the most cautious man on earth, life is about to get interesting. For the most meet the parents, got the ferret on there, the ferret that is very short-sighted and keeps bumping into things. Way out of order, we jump back to 2001 for Pearl Harbor, but this is a really dramatic poster of the Japanese aircraft flying over a clothesline. This is, uh, I think, a shot that's actually in the movie very similarly. Cold Mountain, looking very, very chilly here. Again, I think this is a very specific international design. Speaking of movies I've not seen, The Fighting Temptations, Cuba and Beyonce, she was one temptation he couldn't resist. That's not the design I've commonly seen with it. I've completely forgotten that this existed. Uh, both the movie and the poster for the most part. Paycheck, John Woo, one of his last Western outings. I like the puzzle piece design that they chose for the poster art. I thought that was really quite a neat thing to do. We've got a couple of key clues as well. Scattered in the, in the design. The teaser poster for Starsky and Hutch hitting the streets, uh, March 12th, directed again by Todd Phillips. And you've just got the car because that's all you really need because that is a very attention-grabbing image. The Passion of the Christ with Jim Caviezel, a Mel Gibson film. For information, call, that's the uh, hotline for making church bookings to go and see it, which is less of a tactic than it is in America. You see that very commonly a lot. And then you'll be surprised when some Christian movie ends up topping the charts for one week because all the churches have bulk bought their tickets. Win a date with Tad Hamilton. Again, a movie I saw in theatres. I remember it being okay back in the day. And... She gave the boxing world the one-two punch they never saw coming. It's Meg Ryan and Omar Epps in Against the Ropes, the boxing bio. Directed by Charles S. Dutton, who co-stars in it. Kill Bill Volume 2. Uh, yeah, I don't have Kill Bill 1 for whatever reason. They never put out one for that, but they did put out one for Kill Bill 2, as you can see, because she's wearing the black leather jacket and they've inverted the colour scheme from the first movie's poster. Thunderbirds, the teaser poster for that. Directed by Jonathan Frakes, had no attachment with the property whatsoever. You could very much tell. But we didn't know that at the time because we had this great teaser poster of Thunderbird 2 here and that was all you need to get excited about the movie and then be greatly underwhelmed by the results. Shaun of the Dead. I felt like you were surrounded by zombies. Great poster design. I love this one. Of course, they couldn't use this for the US one sheet, but it's also set on a tube uh, poster as well. So I guess a lot of the nuance there would have been lost. You got Shaun there with the, uh, with the flowers for his mum that he tries to give to her and it doesn't really work out. I believe uh, that's one of the Wilson twins on the poster there. They used to write reviews, uh, DVD and Blu-ray reviews. I bet they'll never actually watch this video. If you are watching, be sure to say hi in the comments. Back to you, Lindsay Lohan. Confessions of a teenage drama queen. So much drama, so little time. Disney movie featuring the star of Freaky Friday. I'm gonna move on. 
Honey, the Jessica Alba dancing movie. I didn't actually recognise Jessica Alba being in this movie for a really long time. It doesn't look like her, mostly because her hair's covering her face. Oh, home on the range. The nadir of the Disney animated lineup. What a cast lineup. Roseanne Barr, Judi Dench, Jennifer Tilly, Cuba Gooding Jr., Randy Quaid, Steve Buscemi. Oof. Twisted with Ashley Judd, Samuel Jackson, Andy Garcia, Every Murder Has a Mark. Yeah, I've not seen this movie. I do have a DVD of it somewhere, but uh, I heard it ain't great. Ah, Chronicles of Riddick. Big epic poster, Riddick standing around amongst all the uh, necromongers. I believe that's the name for them, uh, the bad guys in the movie. They've put all the... Uh, all the supporting cast on there because they'll be much more well known outside of the US. Connie and Carla, the drag movie with Nia Vardolos, the hilarious new comedy from the writer and star of My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah, Nia Vardolos and Tony Collette, they're out of makeup, which they are for most of the movie. Most of the time they're in disguise because the premise of the movie is that they witness a mob hit and they go in disguise as a drag act. And so it's basically a reverse version of Some Like a Hot with maybe a little bit of Sistract thrown in there. Character poster for Sky Captain and The World Tomorrow with Angelina Jolie, who is barely even in that movie, but was really heavily promoted as being in it. Because, of course, Angelina Jolie, big star at the time, and if you've got her for 10 minutes, you might as well flaunt the crap out of her. Mean Girls, one of them is really... Re well, they're both actually kind of a little bit frayed around the edges. Again, another embarrassing confession. Never seen Mean Girls. Um, I just sort of overlooked it at the time it came out as, oh, it's just a movie for girls. And now it's a... Big old gap that I should probably address. Oh, but luckily we're making up for the Sky Captain Angelina Jolie poster because now we've got one that's slightly more of a lead in the movie. It's Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, I still haven't kicked the habit of cussing out magazines. Zatoichi, the uh, Kitano movie. Never mind Kill Bill or Last Samurai. This is the one to beat them all. Whoa, knockabout comedy, fountains of blood, and a tap dance finale. Now that cinema says time out. You know what? That's a really good good way of selling it. That is, I genuinely want to see that movie now. And on the other side, oh, it's another version of the uh, teaser for Starsky and Hutch, but it has the tagline, the original partners in crime. The remake of Dawn of the Dead, which is directed by Zack Snyder. Taking lives, your generic post-7 thriller. Scooby-Doo 2! I actually did a podcast on this. One of my uh, friends, Scott, was doing a podcast where he was watching Scooby-Doo 2 for 30 days through October. I don't think he ever actually completed that podcast, but I was one of the last episodes of that. Raising Helen with John Corbett and Kate Hudson. It's about a party girl that has to learn responsibility when she has to raise some kids after a bereavement. This is no way put across by this poster, which just purely sells it on the romantic side of it. Two brothers with Guy Pearce and the acclaimed director of The Bear. Uh, which is about uh, infant tiger cubs. Lots of cute tiger cub action there. Oh, and finally we catch up with Jude Law in Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow as the titular Sky Captain. And I, again, I like the very kind of period design here as well. Oh, we got another fold out for Attack of the Clones. That was what Disney Big Time was doing a lot, apparently, of Attack of the Clones. And on the back of it, got promos for Robinson's uh, Lilo and Stitch tie-in. And join the club, the Quizzlers. Remember before the Jamie Oliver campaign and he got those all got rid of? Yep. Oh, got another fold out. It's for Scooby Doo! Scooby Doo! Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? And on the other side, the CG adventures of Milky Way. Remember when Milky Way had a slightly terrifying alien as their mascot? Well, now you can. And on the other side, our lips are sealed on VHS. Ah. Free collector's postcard? Wow, that will be a treasure. Some more magazine cutouts now, two weeks notice, which I did see theatrically. Uh, oh, from Unlimited Magazine 2003. We're jumping really kind of back and forth. Ned Kelly, the Heath Ledger movie, which is surprisingly forgettable. I Spy, the Owen Wilson, Eddie Murphy comedy, which should be funnier than it really is, but it isn't. It's based off the old TV series with Bill Cosby. Attitude meets espionage. Mm. Does it? Dreamcatcher with the shit weasels. Evil slips through. Oh man. If you enjoy bad movies, go watch Dreamcatcher. Phone booth. I don't remember this design promoting phone booth. Sort of this collage design. The Little Polar Bear. Yeah, this is some European import they probably dubbed into English and 
put out in cinemas just to appease the kids during half term or more specifically during Easter. Although I do like that design, it's cute, but it's also kind of creepy in its own way in the way that Polar Bear's so isolated. Cradle to the grave and abuse to spelling, Jet Li and DMX because we are putting DMX with all the action stars. Our Disney big time with a stretched, really badly edited version of Daredevil. This proved to be rather ironic because unfortunately Daredevil was released with a 15 certificate so none of the kids that were reading Disney Big Time could actually go and see it. Another fold out from Disney Big Time, this is a Simpsons one. Technically not for a film. I believe this is the same artwork used for the Simpsons uh, compilation DVD and VHS Risky Business of Homer in the vat of nuclear waste. Careful there mates, you'll irradiate yourself and that's not going to be fun. And suddenly We've gone back in time to the Fast and the Furious and Nicole Kidman being profiled about Moulin Rouge. Star Wars Episode 1, The Gungan Frontier. Create your own Star Wars world. That sounds exciting. Oh, this comes from a tie-in Star Wars comic and this was in the centre of it. This uh, duel between Qui-Gon Jinn and Darth Maul here. Oh, lots of things from Star Wars Episode 1 stuff. We've jumped back in time. This is actually pages from the comic. Why? Because it's the shot of the droids being blown up in the middle of it. The Water Boy, a man with a serious drinking problem. Oh, this is an old copy of Flix magazine. Yeah, they used to hand these out in cinema foyers. Then they became a proper legit magazine for a while and then they disappeared because they probably went bust. Tea with Mussolini. Uh, I will pass on that. Thank you very much. In Dreams, the Neil Jordan movie. What's in the middle of this? It's the back page and on the other side it's promoting the Rugrats movie. Why did I cut up an old issue of Flicks? What were you doing, young man? You got Waking Ned, you got the faculty there, complete with the uh, Scream lineup pose that was ubiquitous for horror films during the late 90s. 8mm, which I've never, never seen. Payback. No more Mr. Nice Guy. It rocks, says uh, Angie Erigo of Empire, sounding like a 10-year-old. Arlington Road. The best twist endings in years, but also a trailer that shows way too much of the movie. As I understand it, I have not actually seen Arlington Road. Ah, oh, look, Mighty Joe. Did they literally just release it as Mighty Joe in the UK? I, I seem to recall it was called Mighty Joe. I presume the actual reason I cut it out was for a civil action on the other side, based on the sensational true story. Club Le Monde, London 93. If you remember it, you weren't there. Well, certainly that's true of this movie because I don't even remember this being a thing that existed. Possession, human passion is the ultimate mystery. Let's chalk that up to another movie I didn't see. Divine Secrets, the Yaya Sisterhood with Sandra Bullock. Mothers, Daughters, the never ending story of good Good versus evil. Okay, that tagline's quite funny. Here's another big time fold out. Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams again, and this kind of focuses on the central portion of that poster. The Banger Sisters, Goldie Horn and Susan Sarandon as old rockers teaming back together. Real women have curves. America Ferreira's big breakout role. It's a triumph, go and see it. Spider-Man 2, a movie called Natalie, which again, I've never heard of, but I'm going to take a wild guess and assume is a foreign language feature. New York Minute with the Olsen sisters and Eugene Levy. It's only when you go through these that you realise how many movies you've forgotten, like Story of the Weeping Camel, which I definitely did not see. Around the World in 80 Days, which in certain territories is a Disney movie, but not in the UK. This was a Walden Media production that Disney just acquired the rights to. Thunderbirds, the more final poster for it, which again tries to convince you that the Thunderbirds down here will be in it more than they actually are. I don't remember this version of Garfield the movie, My World world my movie my adverts on the red carpet right there i remember it rained so torrentially that 10 minutes before the end of the movie uh they cut off all the power in the building and then we had to wait for about 20 minutes to see the end of garfield catwoman the infamous halle berry movie never saw it a cinderella story with hillary duff Love Me If You Dare, with Marion Cotillard before anyone knew who she was, standing on a train track. And this is an awful poster that is a blow up of a video source from the looks of it. it. Looks really bad. That would not sell you into watching the movie at all. Oh, the teaser design for The Village. And that's when we knew that M. Night Shyamalan had really gone off the rails when he revealed that twist at the end of that movie, which was the one that everyone figured it was going to be. Sylvia with Gwyneth Paltrow and Daniel Craig on DVD about Cynthia Plath, uh, the 
the late poet. The Motorcycle Diaries with Gaia Garcia Bernal. Again, I quite like the minimalism of this here. The Legendary Spirited Away. You know, I really should watch the Studio Ghibli stuff, but I just haven't found the time. Colin Firth here in trauma. Yep, looking pretty traumatic for him. Believe what you see, what you believe. Black Ball. Paul Kay, best known for Dennis Penis in the UK. I believe it was released under the National Lampoon banner in the States. It's a comedy set in the world of bowls. Notes the typography on the tagline there and how certain letters have been stretched out and bolded. If you read that correctly, it spells out the word Tosser, which is what he jeers at them, as I recall from the trailer. Summer Things, an adulterous comedy. Yep, I'm getting that vibe. I'm liking the summer colours here. Enormously funny. Highly seductive. Was this at the point where we're still selling movies based entirely on sex appeal? Matrix Reloaded, lots and lots of coding. Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde 2. Seen the original, never saw Legally Blonde 2. Although I do hear it is bigger, bolder and blonder. Goodbye Lenin with Daniel Brawl, which is about a young man trying to hide his mother from the shock of learning that the Soviet Union has collapsed. What a girl wants. That was a movie that sure existed. Sexy and entertaining, lots of movies about people by beaches or swimming pools. In this case, swimming pool with Charlotte Rampling. And on the other side, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, a proper final one sheet for that as well. Double whammy. Your brain will laugh its socks off. Very splendid. Very splendid? What kind of phrasing is that? Ah, Bruce Almighty. This was the one they used internationally where he's in the famous pose right here, which is very, very memorable, obviously. I think this was the cover they used for the DVD over here as well. As well they should. It's very distinctive and puts across the premise of the film very amusingly, but I presume they didn't use that one in America because it might be considered a little bit too blasphemous. Ah, Disney big time again. It's Hulk. It's Eric Banner green thing. Arrgh. On the back of it. Oh, Spy Kids 2 is on DVD and video. Get it from the gadget shop. They sell videos in there? And Golden Nuggets. Got a little puzzle there that I'm not going to do. Analyze that. Uh, bad sequel to analyze this. There, analysed. Personal Velocity. That sure is a movie I don't remember existing. The Life of David Gale. Boy, is this a movie that probably plays differently in this day and age. Kevin Spacey on death row and an infuriating ending. Solaris. Remember when they tried to sell this as a romantic sci-fi movie in the vein of Titanic? Because that's what they did. Party Monster. Oh, Macaulay Culkin with his brains exposed. What a charming image. Sometimes drug can be murder. Young Adam with uh, Ewan McGregor, the Brit flick of the year. I remember this being a very, very adult movie. The Stepford Wives, the Frank Oz remake. It's not all that funny and also has an ending that makes no sense because we massively compromised at the end of it. And the DVD has loads and loads of deleted footage, including an incredibly disturbing scene where where Bette Midler goes insane in a robot form and opens up her breast to reveal a, a, a fridge freezer inside of her chest, if I remember correctly. And it was a big, expensive CGI sequence that they entirely cut from the movie. Oh, this one's a rarity. We got Bollywood in here. I think I just accidentally stumbled on a Bollywood poster once and picked it up. Main Prem Kai Dawan Hoon. Uh, sorry, I'm probably mangling that badly. I have absolutely no idea what this film is about. Bollywood is not my area of expertise. Oh, and we got a flyer here for Dreamer, the Dakota Fanning horse movie inspired by a true story. And on the back of it, got a bit of a word search and some puzzles and stuff. Oh. Serenity, the Firefly spin-off. They aim to misbehave, and so they do. We've got Summer Glau posing there as well. It's a really cool poster, actually. I like this better than the poster they used internationally. Elizabeth Town, the best place to find yourself. The notorious Cameron Crowe movie that coins the term Manic Pixie Dream Girl because Kirsten Dunst behaves in an incredibly artificial way. She's just incredibly obsessed with Orlando Bloom. Just Friends, more magazine cutouts. Let's kind of go through these. That's a really garish poster design for that movie. That really makes you not want to watch it. Ugh. Biting down on his lip. Careful, you're going to tear off Ryan's face there. Rumor has it, the Jennifer Aston movie where she discovers that her family was the inspiration for The Graduate. 
What odd movie. The producer's remake. It's meant to be a sort of recording of the stage version, and that's primarily its main purpose. It's not really to put it on film. It's just purely, hey, let's get a record of a stage performance. But it feels all wrong because it's filmed like a movie. Just, just film an actual stage performance. Don't try and make it this weird hybrid, and all the performances are way too big because they're playing it towards the back row like they would in the theatre. Who are you calling chicken? Chicken Little. Dire Disney comedy. Dire. I annoyed the piss out of me when I watched it. Fun with Dick and Jane. Remake of the 70s movie with George Siegel. There's no guts to it whatsoever. It's it's weirdly weak for what it is. Wallace and Gromit. The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Something wicked this way hot. Obviously, playing along with the sort of hammer horror elements of it. I like the poster design of the giant pumpkin there, which sort of ties in with the movie because they're protecting vegetables. And they've got the activity sheet on the back of it as well. Colour me in. I won't. Nanny McPhee with the kid that hardly ages and I can't remember his name, but also has Emma Thompson and Colin Firth. But funnily enough, Emma Thompson's face, not on this poster, and more colouring sheets on the back of it. Oh, you can dot to dot the donkey. The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D from Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, I've heard nothing but pretty terrible things. It's like the even worse version of Spy Kids 3D. As if we wanted that. And part of the course, activity sheet on the back. March of the Penguins, as told by more. Morgan Freeman. This became a pretty iconic documentary, actually, but again, something that I never saw. But it does have an activity sheet on the back, because we're aiming this at small children. Oh, a little tiny, tiny poster here for Fantastic Four. Uh, yeah, Asda. Picked it up from Asda, of all places. Prepare for the fantastic. That's a really good dynamic design, makes it look really exciting. And of course, if you've seen the 2005 Fantastic Four movie, you'll know that they spend much of it not actually doing very much at all. Land of the Dead, George A. Romero's. Stay scared, George Romero. That's printed onto the poster. I have not had that signed by George Romero. I think that's Edgar Wright, isn't it? That's the zombie versions of Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg right there, very prominently on display, because of course they have a cameo in the movie as a sort of homage to Shaun of the Dead. So there they are. Oh, another version of Curse of the Were-Rabbit. A more dynamic action shot here that tones down the uh, horror elements in by the first one makes it look more kind of action-packed. Eon Flux, based off the MTV series of the same name, the future is Flux. Well, I suppose that's a better tagline than my suggestion, which is the future is fluxed up. I can see why they didn't go with that line of thinking. War of the Worlds, the teaser. Maybe this was the only version they put out for War of the Worlds. I think this was distincted by the fact they didn't put Tom Cruise's massive head on the poster. It's just the burning planet right there. And that pretty much tells you all you need to know. It's a very basic poster. Tom Cruise, War of the Worlds, Flaming Planet, and Steven Spielberg. I mean, that's all you really need to sell the movie on when you've got that big of a draw. Ray! Massive poster for Jamie Foxx's face there. The US one sheet is a quite tasteful, uh, sort of almost silhouette style of Ray Charles, whereas this one is sort of taken mid-movement, almost euphorically, which I guess is them trying to make this look uplifting, even though it's largely about Ray Charles' massive drug abuse. And you've got all the uh, quotes there talking about how Jamie Foxx is going to win the Best Actor Oscar, which he did. Which he did. The Magic Roundabout. Or, as you Americans know of it, Dougal. The Magic Roundabout was the show it was based on. For the US release, the Weinsteins recut it, redubbed it, replaced the cast, at least partially, and of course retitled it. And that version is dreadful, apparently. The, the UK one featured the voices of Robbie Williams. Yes, a pop star. But in the US version, Chevy Chase, wasn't it? Yeah, Chevy Chase. I think that says it all. Activity sheet on the back. Dougal's Delight. The poster here for Meet the Fockers. This kind of works fairly well in this design. The picture frame, which I presume was to accommodate the fact they were changing this backdrop here from the one sheet, but egregious photoshopping on all their faces, but especially on Ben Stiller there, who barely looks like Ben Stiller. His face looks really crumpled and weird, but at least it isn't Little Fockers. Team America, World Police, putting the F back in freedom, just to make sure that you're aware that this is not a children's movie, and the prominent 15 certificate rating here as well contains strong language, violence, sexual references, and sex, all involving puppies. 
puppets. Perhaps one of the funniest consumer advices of all time. <laughs> Very good um, pastiche here as well of the action movie posters of the time and the headshots of the characters are like the strings dangling over the leads as well. The skeleton key. I didn't remember the poster for this in the UK being like this. This doesn't make it look like a horror movie except for the tagline fearing is believing. This makes it look like some arty avant-garde misery porn movie. Sky High, the Disney movie with Kurt Russell there and very very young Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Green Street, the West Ham Hooligans movie with Charlie Hunnam and Eli Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood trying to shake off that Lord of the Rings reputation there. We have a really odd design here for Unleashed, or Danny the Dog as it's known in other parts of the world, the Jet Li movie. That's actually a really striking design that gets across the premise of the movie really well in that he plays someone who has been captured and trained to behave like a dog so that when his collar is taken off he beats up people. You've got him lying on the ground and the Bob Hoskins' boot there, presumably not Bob Hoskins' actual foot though, are pressing against him, but the, the way that he's got his fist up against him, it both makes him look submissive, but also ready to fight back against him. That's a good way of encapsulating the premise of the movie in that one image. The 40-year-old virgin, the longer you wait, the harder it gets. Boom, boom! This was the poster that they released internationally, where everyone is just having sex all around Steve Carell, and he's sucking on his straw. He would take until a crazy stupid love for Ryan Gosling to correct that particular their era. Four Brothers, the John Singleton movie, the late John Singleton with Mark Wahlberg, Tyrese Gibson, Andre Benjamin and Garrett Hedlund. A modernised version of the Sons of Katie Elder, the classic western. Red Eye, the Wes Craven movie. Fear takes flight with Rachel McAdams and Killian Murphy, but all you really need to know is that very basic haunting image of Rachel McAdams' hand there trying to get out, but of course she's captured on a plane. And it really gives it a sense of jeopardy there. Unlike the, uh, the original teaser trailer, which had a really weird thing where Killian Murphy's eye turns red, which is a very literal representation of the title as opposed to an overnight flight you dipsticks kingdom of heaven oh from blockbuster this must have been promoting the video release at the time yeah the dvd release of kingdom of heaven they must have just been handing them out but there we go blockbuster racing stripes folded for some reason this must have been how it came because it's got an activity sheet on the back but it's got a zebra's ass He's my main man, quit horsing around, kiss my tail. Ugh. Without a paddle, I don't remember this design for the movie either. That's the quad design. Oof. What is going on Matthew Lillard here that is clearly taken from an entirely different scene? This is making it look proper bushwhacked. Yeah, really reminding me of the poster for bushwhacked with the way they're hanging off the rope there. Yeah, see, there's their paddle. They're not complete without a paddle. Not yet. It's going to go over the waterfall with them. Again, another fairly unique design here for the remake of the Manchurian Candidate that was never used elsewhere. The poster for the Manchurian Candidate that was used pretty much for the US one sheet and all the, the DVD covers was that shot of... Uh, Denzel Washington's face and it kind of blends out into white. This one has a more kind of generic style design, sort of two antagonistic faces kind of opposing up against each other. Oh, there's Baz again with his Daily Mail quote. And this is one of those where they just plaster all over it with quotes. Ah, The Incredibles, or Mr. Incredible there. I don't really need to say very much about this. The Incredibles is a terrific movie. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie, hero, legend, sponge. Contains very mild threat and peril. I bet it does. I bet it does. Scarlett Johansson, I see in the credit block. I don't remember her being in this. Naturally, activity sheet on the back. Kicking and screaming. Screaming. The Will Ferrell football movie. Will Ferrell looking constipated. Why did we go for this for the design? It looks obnoxious. Will Ferrell gurning. Kids screaming. One man could lead this team to glory. That man was busy. Will Ferrell's in top form. Hilarious. No, he isn't. It's not very good at all. Hustle and Flow with Terrence Howard. That was his big breakout role. It's a nice poster as well. Really well designed. Really stylish looking. Oh, we're back with Will Will Ferrell, Curious George, show me the monkey. Of course, the movie spin-off of the popular children's books. Pride and Prejudice. 
Oh, Baz is on there again. Here we go. Simply and absolutely glorious. This is generally considered to be one of the best period films and one of the best Jane Austen adaptations that has ever been put on film. This has also set up a very popular convention with poster design. This poster for Pride and Prejudice has this kind of striped system here. A lot of movies aimed at older audiences do this kind of format where they'll have the leads at the top here and then a bit of scenery at the bottom and the titling in the middle. It's become an incredibly stock design that has been used many, many times in the past. Tetsuoti, directed by Gavin Hood, who would go on to make X-Men Origins Wolverine, unfortunately for him. This isn't really a quad poster, this is more of a little banner for it. Zathura, the Jumanji spin-off, which is based on another book from the same author. Oh, Kristen Stewart there, all being frozen. They've kind of thrown in little pictures of the film to try and entice people in, because obviously they had a lot of empty space from... <laughs> empty space because it's set in space from having to move this design here but i like the idea of the house floating through space i think that tells you the story that you need to know and the light ray shining behind it and of course there is the puzzle sheet on the back get rich or die trying says 50 cent at the end of the day what will you hang on to meant to be sort of 50 cents big acting break the unfortunate thing for 50 Cent, though, is that he can't really act. This is the international poster for Jarhead, which has him staring out at the gulf there. I think it kind of gives you the idea of the existential nature of the film, in that there's not really a war element so much going on here, so much as the isolation and feeling distant from the backdrop here. Munich! Of course, about what happened after the murders at the Munich Olympics. This is a really nice poster that sees Eric Banner silhouetted and wrestling with his conscience about what he should do. It's a very kind of somber poster, but really establishes the tone of that movie very well. Got an international, very, very colourful poster for Just Like Heaven. Love will bring you back because Reese Witherspoon plays a ghost in it or some kind of spirit and Mark Ruffalo moves into her apartment and they sort of fall in love, but uh, she's a ghost. She's a ghost. Doom. Of course, the famously doomed video game adaptation starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but not on this poster, which very much leans towards the fact of, you know, Doom. You played Doom. Monsters. No one gets out alive. Not technically true. Two people made it out of that movie alive. Inside Man. This is the Spike Lee heist movie with Denzel Washington and Clive Owen. Lots of empty white space on that poster. You would have thought they were desperate to try and fill it with something. Maybe take Denzel Washington's face here and plant it there so it's massive. It looked like the perfect bank robbery, but you can't judge a crime by its cover. Technically true. Uh, because that's one of the big twists in the movie. Failure to launch with Matthew McConaughey and Sarah Jessica Parker. McConaughey again in the rom-com phase of his career. It was good going for a couple of years and then it got real bad. Real bad. American Dreams. This is a spoof satire of American Idol and the like with Hugh Grant as a Simon Cowell-like and Dennis Quaid as a George Bush alike. It's so 2006 because it's focused so much on, you know, American Idol and all that like, which was new and fresh at the time. Teaser poster for Mission Impossible 3. The match striking. That is a good poster. That is a good, exciting poster. See, this is the thing with teaser posters. If you get a really strong image, particularly if you have a franchise and something that's immediately recognizable, you can just put that and that's your poster. And that's the case here. This is Mission Impossible. It's back. Be ready for it. And here is the final design, which rectifies the lack of massive Tom Cruise face on it, although the sparks are there to give it a kind of dramatic action pose. I like the uh, release date there, which makes it look like a kind of ticking clock as well. Jackass number two. This is the teaser poster, and you can tell because all they needed is the jackass skull and crutches. Warning, the stunts in this movie were performed by professionals, so neither you nor your dumb little buddy should attempt anything from this movie, and that is true. Happy Feet. Feet. What's your heart song? Activity sheet on the back. Never seen either of the Happy Feet movies. King Kong. Nice dynamic action shot here, building up towards that big fight scene between the dinosaur and King Kong there. You would think that they would emphasize it with King Kong being the entirety of the poster, but no, this, I think, was perhaps a wise decision because obviously 
The poster is wider than it is tall. On a one-sheet poster, you could make King Kong's face the entirety of it, and that's precisely what they did. If I remember correctly, they changed King Kong's design, so it originally was something different, and it had a bit more of a kind of weird snaggletooth. Everyone points out it looks kind of a bit goofy, so they very quickly revised the design into more of what we see here, which makes him look more like a gorilla than the sort of vaguely gormless version that it was originally envisioned as. Waiting! A very cheeky little poster there with the presumably nude woman and the olives in front of it. A comedy of massive portions! Boom boom! This is one of those pasting people looking in various directions, not actually looking at the camera except for Ryan Reynolds, who is obviously the only one who specially shot for this quad poster. Oh good, we got two of the DreamWorks movie Over the Hedge. Oh, technically, two different designs. Okay, so this is the original teaser design for Over the Hedge. Bruce Willis voicing the raccoon RJ there. This is the main design for it, which, again, you'll notice with kids' movies, they try to push a bit more of an action-y perspective in the main design and so you've got them smashing through the hedge this time and you've got the villainous character voiced by Thomas Hayden Church but weirdly enough not billed above the title but what you will notice in the billing is that Avril Lavigne has been added to the credits block. One of these has an activity sheet on it and one of them does not. Oh, we got another poster for Curious George as well. Again, another kind of dynamic looking action shot there. Luckily enough, we've got a duplicate of the original Curious George poster there. So this was the teaser, this was the main poster, just to compare them. Gotta to appeal to the kids, dynamic. I love this, by the way. You, contains no sex, violence, or bad language. I'm pretty sure they've changed that now so they don't list it really awkwardly like that, so it's something like contains ma no material to offend or harm, which is a much better way of phrasing that. Or alternatively, they could have just left off the advice. Because <laughs> I don't think anyone was expecting loads of sex, violence, or bad language from Curious George. The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. That is the one that is largely without the cast from the remaining members of the Fast and the Furious movie. Remember when we thought the Fast and Furious franchise was largely dead around this time? DOA, Dead or Alive. I think this is something that was supposed to be hanging from sort of the ceiling tiles. The video game adaptation with Jamie Presley and Holly Valance and is generally considered to be very bad. Now we go back in time a little bit for this Cars poster. And for some reason on the other side of it, a Bug's Life with places that you can put stickers on. The Sun, we love it. I presume what was going on here. The Sun was giving away a poster for each of the Pixar films that you could put stickers on, and then on the back it would make a collage of the cast of Cars on the back of it. But uh, we do not have that context here. King Arthur! The untold story that inspired the legend. Clive Owen and Kira Knightley, and Kira Knightley making fun of the fact that they'd uh, enlarged her cleavage for the poster because she is rather notoriously flat chested, and that amused her greatly. Oh, we got a poster here for X Men The Last Stand. Teacher, manipulator. Ooh, we're playing with theme here because, of course, we realise that Patrick Stewart's Professor X, he has been controlling Jean in ways that are unethical, but then the movie doesn't really know what to do with that and largely drops the angle. But nice of the marketing campaign here to emphasise that in this little character poster here. Fearless with Jet Li, another great martial arts movie to catch up on. The Green, very reminiscent of the poster for House of Flying Daggers. Which trying to capitalize on that, weren't we? Open season with Martin Lawrence and Ashton Kutcher. They're putting the forest back into nature's control, which is hyperactive kids movie madness. Activity sheet on the back if you're interested in that sort of thing, and I don't know why you would be. Ah, oh, the notorious Deck the Halls. Released on my birthday. I did not go and see it on my birthday. You got them kind of pulling the Christmas lights between them there. This Christmas when the lights go on, the gloves come off. Isn't it funny because the title is punching someone in the face. And you got a fun sheet as well. Ah, oh, cute. Staying with the Christmas theme is Escape Clause, Santa Claus 3, Santa Claus versus Jack Frost, The Breakup. Pick a side. That's a good image, the way that they've got the duct tape separating Vince Vaughn and Jeff Rass in there. The Ant Bully. We did a Bug's Life, but we did it seven years later with the voice of Nicolas Cage. Oh, 
look, there's a fact sheet on the back of it. Oh, good. Barnyard, The Secret Lives of Animals Revealed. It's another animated film that I did not go and see because I was too old. And let's face it, why the hell would I go and see this? I do remember the one thing that everyone remembered about Barnyard. The bull had udders. That's not how cow anatomy works. And there's a uh, lame activity sheet on the back. Miami Vice. I like the kind of stark white and blue design here. This was a very disappointing movie. I have tried to rewatch Miami Vice so many times. You notice, by the way, they flipped the billing here. I, I recall that Jamie Foxx was actually top billed in a lot of the promotions, but obviously Colin Farrell, local, local talent, put him first. And actually correct, because he is the lead of the movie. We've also got the main poster for it as well. No law, no order. That's not strictly true now, is it? Monster House, the Robert Zemeckis produced movie. And I like the poster design here, really sells the movie. It's sinister but also kind of inviting at the same time because you've got the door opening and the house looks like a face. Two copies of Meet the Robinsons for some reason. Think your family's weird? Weird that they chose the design their main character to look a lot like Jonathan Lipnicki. And of course the ubiquitous activity sheet on the back. Hannibal Rising! Meet an old friend for dinner. We got two of them. Got company. This is the prequel that everyone would like to forget existed because it was pretty awful from what my understanding was. Here we get into some interesting stuff. This is a poster for the Simpsons movie featuring Maggie. These all come from the sun. So you could collect a load of tokens and the sun would send you a load of promotions for the Simpsons movie. So you've got various different character posters here. Here we go, we got one with Homer here. Got one with uh, them relaxing on the beach. Got one focused on Lisa and Bart's about to cut her swing as she reads Victor Hugo. We've also got another one focused exclusively on Lisa. On the back of these, they do form a collage. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get this all in shot, and I'm pretty sure I won't. Okay, so that... Here we go, here's, here's the bottom row of those posters. There is but yet more of them to go. And of course that's not all of them, we've still got quite a few of those Simpsons posters to go, but I think we're in a patch where we might end up jumping backwards and forwards. Planes to fire and rescue, when others fly out, heroes fly in. Spin-off of the Pixar movie, I've not seen either of the Planes films, I've heard they were not great. Now we have a Christmassy themed version of The Muppets, where they're wrapped up in Christmas lights, they've got their little Santa hats on and everything, and of course the ubiquitous activity sheet on the back. Okay, this one has a bit of a story behind it. This one came from America. So I remember I went with Welshie to go and see Texas Chainsaw 3D and AMC. They had this poster for Gangster Squad. Then it became clear, oh no, how am I going to get this home? And I managed to stuff it into my suitcase and it arrived relatively undamaged, apart from the fact that I had to fold it inside. But yeah, this one managed to actually make it all the way from America. Uh, you can even see the R rating there. I like this pyramid head design where he's got the blade sticking out at you. Very 3D. And of course, this is a one sheet design. Prepare for a 3D ride through hell. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Dog Days, the sequel. No, it's the third movie, isn't it? Because there's the previous two ones. Yes. Yeah, got the activity sheet on the back. No surprises there. Wreck-It Ralph. When the game's over, the fun begins. Good design. They've put Bison and Balrog as well as uh, Robotnik and q -Bert. Yeah, they've put Sonic on there as well. It's a little bit cheeky because they don't have major roles in the movie. You think they're going to be major roles in the film and they're not. That's a little bit false advertising. Bit cheeky. Nativity 3. Dude, where's my donkey? Good lord. This is one of the worst movies I have ever sat through in the theatre. Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Whew, that's a bit dusty, isn't it? Ugh. Ugh. It's uh, the teaser poster design for it, uh, which obviously has him shining a light out on London, because that's where it's set. This I'm pretty sure I nicked by accident. This is a promotion for Empire Cinemas to attach to the movie Love Rosie. So much dust on here. Excuse me one moment. Ugh. Ah, why is it so dusty? Uh, no, no, stop it. Uh, uh. It's pretty easy to guess where these little ones come from. These are little art cards, A4 art cards that come from Total Film Magazine. So you got Last Jedi here, Blade Runner, 
Rogue One. Some of these you'll probably remember from my videos actually back in the day. We're into the ones that have appeared in my videos. Captain Underpants, a little tiny one here based on the book series. Good striking image there, sort of sending up the Batman logo or the Underpants logo there. Another arts card that came from Total Film here, Alien Covenant. Really kind of horrific image here of people having their faces hugged, sort of this muriel, really disturbing, way scarier than anything actually in the movie. Technically this is a fold out for the Lego Batman movie. You've got the key art on the front here. Got all those characters running towards the camera which seems to be a thing for Lego movie posters just have the characters run towards camera. But on the inside you've got the activity sheet. And on the back of it, it's got a synopsis. Now this one became a bit notorious because it was on my wall for absolutely months. It's a poster for Terminator Genesis. He's back. Yes, he is indeed. I mean, I like the silhouetting of it, and I like the it kind of homages, the kind of scarring. It's a poster that also tells you, yes, it's exactly the same as the other Terminator movies you watched. I think that the teaser on the other side, this again came from Total Film Magazine, hence why it's a fold-out, tells you a lot more about the movie. The Terminator skull turning into an hourglass. Really clever design there. You'll notice the huge damage done by my magnets right there. Similarly from Total Film Magazine, which I used to collect only for the poster issue. Like, yeah, they're giving out posters with this issue. That's great. I've got new wall decorations and they stopped doing that. Which... Anyway, Batman v Superman. Uh, Two-sided. One Batman, one Superman. What a pain in the masters. Oh, got another one for Rogue One. Yeah, I think this is Empire, fittingly enough. And uh, yeah, it's got Felicity Jones standing in front of the shadow of the Death Star, which is looming over her. Ooh. Nice design here. The sort of design that you'd want displayed on your wall, but presumably not with massive crease lines through it from where they'd folded it with the magazine. Now, you might remember when... Uh, Spider-Man 3 came out, uh, there was a site called Play.com and as a, uh, as a pre-order promotion, you could get a customized poster for the movie. And that's what I got. And so, like an absolute dork, I have this tiny poster for Spider-Man 3 that says, enjoy giving the DVD a spin. I didn't even personalize it that well. I gave it a really generic message, although I think that's because I realized that putting something like, enjoy the DVD, Matthew, would be stupid. <laughs> Paddington 2, fun and games. Yes, technically it's another activity sheet. You'll notice that uh, there's been much less in the way of movies aimed towards adult audiences because unfortunately most of the ones they give away in theater lobbies now are kids movies with activity sheets on the back of them. And then some of them are just plain activity sheets and I don't collect those. Those can't be used as posters and set decoration. Mm. The nut job too nutty by nature. Get ready, get set, get nuts. Why was the nut job hit in the first place? Ugh. Next up, we got the Jungle Bunch, which I believe is a spin-off of an animated show of some kind. But look, it's got crazy characters acting wackily and obnoxious. You know it's appealing to kids that way. For some reason, there is actually, oh, I know what's happened here. So it's on one of those sheets where you pull off one of them, except what I've done is I've inadvertently pulled off two sheets by accident. Jolly good. The Expendables 3, new team, new attitude, new mission. We're struggling to get everyone in the frame here. I keep meaning to do a review on uh, Expendables 3. Oh, we've got character quotes on the back of it as well. Time to mow the lawn. I'm on the wrong end of a thousand guns. Don't need team, got me, says Yin Yang, because Jet Li's in the movie for about five minutes. More total film posters here from 2004, I think. We got Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Really strong shot there of Caesar and his war paint staring out at you. And on the other hand, Juno Hill and Channing Tatum have got their guns out for 22 Jump Street. Both of them strong sequels. Here is a double-sided poster for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. His greatest battle begins. I'm pretty sure they use that tagline for Spider-Man 3 as well. And it's got Spider-Man facing storm clouds. That's an atmospheric kind of teasery poster. And then you've got him and Electro facing off against each other here. Let's go back to the Simpsons movie a second because I finally found another one of them. Here we go. Here's the Simpsons movie again. It's Marge with her hair on fire, carrying her wedding photos. And on the back of it, 
Well, it's a part of the street scene. Helicopter. Not much is actually going on there. And we got another Simpsons movie one because we might as well do that while on topic. It's Homer on the Wrecking Ball. Because you'll recall there was a gag in that movie of Rock in a Hard Place. Now on this side, we have a quad poster for Skyfall. Good strong poster. Daniel Craig lying on his back shooting 007 symbol on the back of it. And on the other side, it's the teaser poster for Django Unchained. And again, nice use of the sort of, um, oh, I'm struggling to remember his name. Soul Bass. It has a kind of soul bass sort of look to the design here. It has a very strong, evocative look, very reminiscent of the black exploitation movies and the westerns, specifically the spaghetti westerns that Quentin Tarantino is trying to evoke with this kind of design. But Quentin Tarantino movies always have fairly great poster art made for them. Dark Shadows, the Tim Burton movie. Yeah, the inglorious end of the Johnny Depp. Tim Burton collaborations and on the back of it the legend ends and Bane standing over the shattered bat cow and that is a great image that's an exciting image a threatening ominous image show dogs he's putting police work on pause to go undercover oh this movie's terrible I know I've seen it I saw it in the uncut version yeah I saw the bits that they cut out they've always kept them in the UK version they didn't snip those bits out and uh yeah it's a bit creepy probably shouldn't have that in your children's movie uh oh boy this is a poster that uh, requires context this is the poster for iron sky i remember i went to mcm and revolver who was the distributor they were handing out posters for this at the table you probably couldn't get away with that now Boy, is that awkward. From the Daily Mail, again, all the mail on Sunday, it's The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, with the elves. You know, at least I'll say this for The Desolation of Smaug, at least it isn't an unexpected journey that takes forever to get started. Got the character profiles, yep. Have you joined the treasure hunt on Facebook yet? No! Johnny English, Reborn, the second Johnny English movie, the largely uninspired sequel to the fairly uninspired Johnny English that was based off old Barclay card adverts. Oh look, it's a little minion mask from McDonald's. Hello, I am a minion. Oh wait, that's not how they talk, is it? Blah, blah. Sorry for that. Back to Total Film Magazine, we have a fold out for The Last King of Scotland, which is Forrest Whitaker winning his Oscar for playing Idi Amin. And I like the way the poster has the Scottish stripes across it, dividing the characters as well. The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one, this is just the back of his costume. And again, good example of the teaser poster adage, strong image, good genre connection with the franchise, instant eye-catching. And then there's this very stark poster for David Fincher's remake of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which came out here on Boxing Day. It's a bit of a weird pose considering the movie is largely about violence against women and there is this kind of threatening tone, but Daniel Craig's character is not that. It's got some weird undertones to the image. I think there was a bit of a controversy about this poster because of that and also because of the sort of shadow nudity there. More total filmness. The Counselor, spelt with two L's over here, as opposed to Counselor, as it was in America. Sin is a Choice. This is the Ridley Scott movie with the script from Cormac McCarthy. And we got the remake of Carrie here. Again, strong, iconic image of Carrie doused in the blood. Back to 2007 now, but still with Total Film, we got The Simpsons movie. Again, you probably have seen this poster hanging up in my older videos a lot, because I didn't change my posters for a very long while. And on the other hand, we have got The Fountain, the Darren Aronofsky movie, and uh, I will try and get this. You got the two characters divided but looking upside down at each other and you got the fountain between them. Next, more posters from Total Film I think. This is a fold out poster for X-Men Days of Future Past and nicely they've got both actors for Professor X and Magneto here. It works especially well actually with Ian McKellen and Michael Fassbender there. Decidedly less so with Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy there, but nevertheless, good idea, strong design, works in the core theme of, you know, got the X-Men, past and present, all of that going on in the design right there and strong colors as well to match the opposing sides of each of those characters. They did do a previous one for X-Men First Class where they put them in the silhouettes and that those were some awful posters. <laughs> 
might be some of the worst professional made posters I think I've ever seen. Fan edits are, were better than those posters. This is a little flyer for We're the Millers. I think they changed that to something that wasn't originally Kenny, it was something else. Sure enough, two of the arrows have actually been changed from the original US poster. Will Poulter's originally said Virgin, because apparently that's a crime. And Emma Roberts's one originally listed Runaway, which has been changed to Hellraiser in the British version. Silly, sexy, and seriously funny. Sexy? We're the Millers? Sexy? I, I guess they're talking about the scene where Jennifer Aniston does a striptease. Stretching it, folks. Are you that desperate? The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. These again come from Total Film. This is Gandalf. And the elves again. They were really, really hyping up that Legolas and Orlando Bloom was back. And Evangeline Lilly, who do nothing in the movie, but they sure are there, aren't they? Here we are at Monsters University. Yep, we've managed to go from Monsters Inc. to Monsters University. Big crowd shot of all the characters here, sort of all hanging out at uni, having a good time. And then there's Thor, The Dark World, which is generally considered to be one of the weaker of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with good reason. It's a bit all over the place. So many Hobbit posters! So many of them. An unexpected journey. Again, teaser design. It's Gandalf walking towards the Shire. Strong iconography. Tries to evoke a bit of nostalgia as well while we're at it. It reminds us of the very first movie, Fellowship of the Ring, so you've got the parallels in there as well. And then there's Man of Steel, another good teaser poster here. Again, very strong on the singular iconography of it. A little uh, A4 art card for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Pretty much, this is a logo. Remember when Jeff Goldblum said that, and then he says it again? Oh, we're back to The Hobbit again! It's Martin Freeman as Frodo Baggins carrying his, his uh, big old sword. That makes it sound like he's whipping out his penis, but he's not. Oh, it's got an activity sheet on the back of it, because even this was aimed at children. We go back to an activity two, Danger in the Manger. Look, there's another donkey in it. And it's got David Tennant in dual roles, and it's still incredibly annoying and badly made but at least it isn't Nativity 3. Next, this very badly crumpled poster for Epic, which probably has seen better days. If you saw it in some of my older videos, it was probably better maintained than this. It was just that I didn't treat it very well after I took it down off the wall. Chimpanzee, the Disney nature films. These don't get much of a release out over here for obvious reasons, because we have David Attenborough. Why would we want to see that on the big screen? We, we've probably already seen a lot of this footage already. TMNT. I forgot that I collected this one. Yeah, you got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's surrounded by the ninjas. They've got a Scooby-Doo reject behind them. Surf's up. Shia LaBeouf is a penguin and he's surfing. The ocean just got cooler. Tough puffs. Free birds. It's the movie where the turkeys try to stop Thanksgiving from happening. But look at them, aren't they cute? They're little balls of fluff. Aww. And a little flyer for the dreadful adaptation of The Lorax, with the voice of Danny DeVito, who is really the only good thing about it, let's be honest. Last Vegas. Hey, it's these older character actors. They're hanging out together. They're in a white space and they're smiling. That's Poster Design 101, as we've seen from old Pixar posters. One legendary weekend, and one movie you won't even take a weekend to forget. 47 Ronin! Keanu Reeves is in Japan uh, amongst a largely Japanese cast. We've had planes too, but now we're back to planes. The unnecessary spin-off to cars. I think that sums up, really. Muppets, most wanted. Two frogs, one pig, epic mayhem. I like this design, actually, the big action-packed pseudo-spy movie design, and you've got that location-hopping element incorporated in it. And you've got two Kermits. Two Kermits for the price of one. And even better, it doesn't have Ricky Gervais on the poster. Always a benefit, in my opinion. Frozen now, from the creators of Tangled and Wreck-It Ralph. Everyone just chilling here. With a big empty space right here where we fit nothing on. Like, we could have made better use of this positioning, but I guess we're trying to make sure that the antlers here are entirely in frame. This was on my wall for longer than I would like to admit. The poster for Semi-Pro with Will Ferrell, which I think was one of the last movies that New Line released as a separate studio. This was another total film fold-out. And what it folds out to reveal, if I can be very, very careful. Well, first of all, it folds out to reveal St. Trinians with uh, Gemma Arson and Colin Firth. Again, characters on a white background. That way we can get out of here at 5.55. 
But if we expand this even further, oh, it's the golden compass. Yes, that's right. The failed first attempt at trying to bring it to the screen. Uh, Daniel Craig there, who was barely in the movie because they cut most of his scenes. They showed Comic-Con footage uh, where they did actually go through with the ending of the golden compass book. But then they cut it because they figured, oh, that's going to end the movie on a bummer. Uh, so uh, we'll just use it for a sequel. And then they have made the sequel, and no one has ever seen the footage since. And on the back is an image of Edward Norton in Pride and Glory. Do you remember that movie? I sure don't. Oh, we found another one of the Simpsons movie posters, and probably the most risque out of all of them. It's Naked Bart, with his member being hidden by Ned Flanders' chip. That was their big risque moment. Ice Age 4, Continental Drift. I remember seeing that in theatre because I had to review it. Puzzled Scrat. Oh, I can trace Scrat out and not do that. Firehouse Dog contains mild language, firefighting danger and crude humour. A young Josh Hutchison with a real hot dog. Is your dog a hero? Make your dog famous. Don't go to that address. It probably doesn't work anymore. Sherlock Gnomes. Another movie I was very glad not to have to go and see to review it. The sequel to Gnome and Juliet way after anyone could have possibly cared about it and lots and lots of jokes about butts from what I understand Ratatouille he's dying to become a chef I like that gag. Pixar's really good about poster campaigns that very succinctly tell you everything you need to know about the movie and this is it this image eye-catching funny tells you exactly what the movie's about. First up, it's the remake of Robocop we'd like to forget about. Your move, away from the screen. And the black costume is a mistake, especially because he blends into the night scene so much. Let's make it black, let's make it tactical. No, don't do that, he doesn't stand out anymore. Now, we have Captain America, the Winter Soldier, again, Good strong teaser artwork here. You got Captain America standing there, immediately recognizable with a shield, but he's standing out of the back of a shield carrier there. But what you've also got is the helicarrier there and the Washington Monument. And it very subtly implies the plot of the movie where he's going up against the government and he's going up against shield. It feels like he's just preparing himself to go up against America's institutions as he stands across from Washington DC. Good use of iconography there to convey story. Godzilla, the 2014 film. You might recall that I hated King of the Monsters. This one is fine. Then we got Live, Die, Repeat, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Infamously, the tagline, they use that mostly for the DVD release because they regretted calling it something as bland as Edge of Tomorrow that tells you nothing about the movie, as opposed to the tagline that tells you everything. Live, Die, Repeat, catchy sticks in the memory know exactly what it's about edge of tomorrow <sighs> what's that about of course neither quite are as good as the tagline for the original japanese manga that this was based on which was called all you need is kill but i can understand why you didn't go for that as a title tom cruise and his massive head again and you've got a lot of action going on again it's a poster that doesn't really convey very much about the movie there's posters that have sort of vaguely eye-catching designs that tell you nothing about the movie Aside from who's in it, and then we'll let the tagline explain what it's about. See, if we've learnt anything from these numerous hours covering these posters, a good poster design is not simply slap the stars on a poster design, it's does it convey what the movie is about succinctly. You don't have to rely on the tagline to tell the audience what the movie is about. Lessons. This, oh yes, this is a total film giveaway for uh, Spider-Man 3, a nice reflective foil printed poster that I'd imagine is very fragile, so I'll be quite careful with it. I don't know how shiny that is on camera, but it is very shiny in person. That adds a real nice dimension to it. This is a really nice iconic poster. This was the teaser poster where you had the all black Spider-Man. I think this is an image that is literally in the movie where he sat on top of the church tower. It's right before he rips it all off. And it's a really somber, dark looking poster. He sort of looks like a guy gargoyle in his own way. It hints at a darkness that the movie never actually provides because it's 
far too all over the place and goofy to do so. This is a Cineworld exclusive poster for Cars 3 that is supposed to be given away when you saw the movie in 3D, but I did not see Cars 3 in theatres. In fact, I have not seen Cars 3 at all. This just happened to be handed out because they just had leftovers afterwards. So I went and saw a movie and I saw this and it's a nice piece of artwork. It really is a gorgeous piece of artwork. Probably a better poster than many of the posters that they actually use to promote the film as opposed to the giveaway ones that are meant to commemorate your experience of watching Cars 3. Kong Skull Island! We had King Kong earlier, now we have the MonsterVerse reboot, All Hail the King. And again, one sheet poster really gives you the size and scale of Kong. There are more dramatic versions of this. I really like the Apocalypse Now version of it. That's a really good poster design and really stark and memorable. I wish they I wish they had the guts to make that their main design, but they, they didn't. But this is strong, this is good, and gets across the premise of the movie, as well as the sort of wartime colouring of it as well. Another good poster, bad movie, it's Beauty and the Beast, the live action remake, and I like the use of shadow here, placing the characters between each other, which subtly eludes their romance at the same time. And it's a really stark, really arresting image, and it's eye-catching as well. And it's got a nice little subtlety to it as well. Oh, we got another thing from the sun here in the Simpsons movie, they sent an awful lot. This is a limited edition movie print, which I guess is them transitioning from animation stage to animation stage. Is it though? I don't think it is. I think it's like a joke. That one's definitely a joke. That one is the design of the characters from the Tracy Ullman show. And then you've sort of got the design stages of the characters and then the final version of it's there. But that, I like I like they put the uh, Tracy Ullman version of the characters there. This one was another collectible. This was a Zootropolis poster that was meant to be given away at 3D screenings of it, shown at Odeon. This is a nice kind of noir-esque poster of it that kind of gives you the sort of cop movie sense of the film. Unfortunately, my cat stood on it and ruined it slightly right there. Mm. But anyway, if you see this fox, do not approach him. Please contact the police. It makes it seem like he's a really wanted criminal when he's not. Paddington! We had Paddington 2 earlier, now we have a little small one for the original Paddington with a little puzzle sheet on the back of it. Get Paddington to his marmalade. No, I'm just gonna gaze wistfully into his kind eyes and his smile. Look at him being happy! Look at him being kind and generous. Be more Paddington. The Croods in 3D! Really nice part of this design here is the way that the sort of lion creature there has sort of merged into the surroundings, as are many of the creatures actually threatening the crudes around the various design there. It's a shame that in the middle of it, it's just them standing in a bit of an awkward pose, gurning at camera. The Box Trolls. Again, good example of the design of the poster. You've got the, the trolls down below and you've got the society up above them really succinctly puts across the societal satire going on here as well as the premise of the movie. Another poster I got back from America. Storks. This was from my 2016 trip to Chicago. I went to an AMC there to go and see Don't Breathe and they were handing out this poster. I did see Storks during that same trip. The Good Dinosaur, definitely Pixar's lesser outings here, but the poster I think does a good job of conveying the premise of the movie and you've got the young dinosaur there and the young kid that he's taken charge of and they're both staring each other down and it's that sort of divide. Ah, Nerd Quest. We get to the poster for the movie that I appeared in. There I am, right there. Mike Jevons made this back in 2013, I think. Stuart Ashen there, uh, Harry Partridge, Larry Bundy there. We all got together in the woods and filmed a horror movie. And I believe that Mike J has posted this entire movie on his YouTube channel. So if you haven't, go take an hour of time, go watch it, because why not? I forgot who drew the artwork for this, but it's really gorgeous, very Drew Struzan kind of poster for it. Yeah, really nice poster art. And I actually have this on a t-shirt. I went to Mike's stag do, which was taking place at Olsen Towers, and we were going around the roller coasters. And as a gift for all of us, we were all wearing uh, shirts with the NerdQuest design on it. So I actually have a t-shirt with this design on the poster here on it. Pan! Oh, I think we can succinctly sum this up. It got panned! Ah, but this poster makes it look like a lot more conventional version of Peter Pan and certainly gets you very excited. You got the Jolly Roger kind of floating around in space. That's a really strong eye-catching image. This is a uh Solo. It's a shot from Solo. Just randomly from Solo. I think this was a magazine giveaway. Either Empire or Toll film. One of the two. Not much to be said there. It's the Millennium Falcon. And it sure does look pretty. Smurfs, the Lost Village. I liked the uh, sort of hinting at it 
where you got the uh, eyes in the leaves as they're hiding and watching them. You got eyes all over the place. The Lego Ninjago movie. Find the ninja within ya. They did too many Lego movies too quickly. Unfortunately, they kind of burned out the audience. I mean, this and Lego Batman came out within the same year as each other. And that's, that's too much. This is a little one for Coco and has all the characters sort of posing together, the sort of family portrait. Again, a good example of using the premise of the movie in that he's relating to his family in the land of the dead. That's a cute idea. It gets it across very quickly. This is a giveaway poster for Star Wars The Last Jedi. They did a series of these, but uh, this was the one that I grabbed. And I think it was the last one, hence why there's a bit of damage up there. This is John Boyega's Finn going up against Phasma, who reappears in the movie for five minutes and then promptly dies again. <laughs> but it's a really iconic shot. It's a That's a really nice painting there. Oh my goodness, it's a completely different day. Yes, I didn't actually finish recording all my poster collection. I took six hours filming it and I still didn't manage to get through all of them. So that was March. This is now June, so we're going to pick up for the final batch of posters for the absolute masochists that have somehow managed to get through two and a half hours of this video. But you want to make it to the end, right? I want to make it to the end for the five people that are still there. So let's do this. Now we have Eli Ross, the house with a clock in its walls. Try not to say that title very quickly. Boy, you can get in trouble with that, especially for a children's movie. This one actually downplays the house a lot, as you can see. It's in the background there, but a lot of the US designs put it at the forefront, whereas the UK design obviously puts Jack Black and Kate Blanchett, the two big stars of the movie, at the forefront, as well as the kid, who is the protagonist. And I think this plays up the whole magical angle of it a lot more. Yeah, it's a pretty generic poster, but it does the trick, really. Way back when we had The Incredibles, now we have Incredibles 2, the inferior sequel, but I do like this poster quite a lot, especially as it shows the family all in action. I really like the design where they're all kind of showing off their abilities, especially the two children on the corners of the poster. Even Elastigirl there is sort of stretched in her pose there. It does look a little bit awkward with Mr. Incredible though, trying to do a power punch behind them, but the way that he's spaced behind them doesn't really work very well. I feel like it works better on the one sheet design. I feel like that one's a little bit more artfully composed. But nevertheless, I quite like this poster. Captain Marvel. This one is another art card from Total Film Magazine. This is the teaser artwork for it. Higher, further, faster. Captain Marvel standing there whilst the hangar doors have the symbol of Captain Marvel on there as well. And if you look on the very edges of the poster, you can actually see the cat on the very edge of it right here as well. And a nice little playful nod that really commends you for paying attention to it. It just gives you the sense that she's very powerful, which is exactly what you want from the character. You've also got the, the fighter jets in the background. It's very much a sort of teaser design. These are a batch of posters that came out of, I think, the December 2019 issue of Sci-Fi Magazine. So a lot of these, I think, are television shows. So the first one we have is The Expanse, which is apparently a series on Amazon that I have never even remotely heard of. So I can't tell you anything about this other than it's a fairly standard sci-fi poster that gets all the characters posed in the shadow of maybe a planet or some sort of orbiting spacecraft. I don't know. They're all in a big circle and they're all in a group shot. On the other side of it, we have Picard, which is also on a Prime video in the UK. I have not seen any of Picard before you ask me about my opinions on that show. I don't really watch a lot of Star Trek. Just take my word for it. It has Picard staring out into the future, but he's also standing in front of a vineyard. It kind of gives the impression that it's very late in his life. He's standing next to his dog. And so it's sort of reflective and wistful at the same time. There's a very amber hue to it as well, which gives you the sense that this is very autumnal in Picard's life. Now, I think on the inside, there is an extremely big poster that I'm really going to... No, there's two other posters on the inside. I don't know how this is going to work because you'd have to essentially cut them up in the middle. So I don't understand how this would work. All right, one of these is Black Lightning. Lightning strikes back. 
These are both DC shows. On the other side of it, we have The Flash. There seems to be a bit of a printing error on the uh, the Flash logo here, if you notice. It seems to be that both of these designs share the same thing in that they are basically the characters in the shadow of the protagonist. So you have a massive head for the Flash, you got the Flash logo as the backdrop, and then just throw a couple of other heads around it. That should really do the trick for the design. What the hell is with that tagline here? Speed. Force. Okay. Thanks. Also, I love that these two have the CW time slots on them. Mondays and Tuesdays on the CW. We don't have the CW in this country. I think if I remember correctly, both of these shows air on Sky, I think. Two more TV show posters here. Now we have the one for Batwoman, the first season with Ruby Rose before she departed from the series. That's how you know that I'm shooting this in June because in March that hadn't happened yet. Mmm. Batwoman appears to be posing on some sort of girder, I guess? Her time is now. Her time was one season. This is a, another fairly generic superhero pose poster with not a lot to really say about it. On on the other side, we have this fairly nice, almost hand-drawn looking poster for Supernatural in its squillient series. How many years has Supernatural been going on for? Too long! That's the answer. As it is written, so it shall end. Does this mean it's the final season? I hope so! But yeah, generally it follows the same pattern as these other TV show posters in that you've got the characters arced around a fairly significant symbol, you've got the Winchester's car at the bottom of it, it looks fairly action-packed. Is that another... It seems to be coming apart already, even though I only bought this issue back in December, so good printing quality. And on the back of this is a ridiculously large poster for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. This one actually doesn't have any of the text on it whatsoever, but it does have a big logo for SFX Magazine at the bottom of it. This one tries to cram as many characters in as possible as you would expect. I think it does a fairly good job of making it seem exciting and dramatic. You've got various different action poses. You've got the Falcon behind Ray there. You've even got Sir Rose for the 90 seconds of screen time she has in the movie, but given a fairly prominent placement. The problem is mostly the film that's advertised which was a bit rubbish, to be honest. I can tell you now, that won't be the only uh, poster for The Rise of Skywalker, incidentally, because uh, there were two of them in this issue. So this is actually two Doctor Who themed posters. This one is promoting a comic book from Titan Comics, Doctor Who, the 13th Doctor, where the 10th and the 13th Doctor join forces. So you, you've got the 13th Doctor there with her hands illuminated around the TARDIS, which has David tense doctor coming out of it and i really like this artwork it's a really great design i have not read this comic at all because again i don't really read a lot of comics but it's a lovely image in its own right and on the back we've got a poster for big finishes audiobook of Doctor Who, The Legacy of Time, which reunites several of the Doctors in its own right. You've got Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann. You've got a whole bunch of recognizable players from the TV series. Two more TV show posters here. We've got the BBC Dracula, the one by Moffat and Gattis. So essentially, is like one of their shows in Fast Forward. In three episodes, it manages to completely collapse in on it. Itself. Nevertheless, I like this image here of Dracula rising out of a pool of blood. On the other side of it, you've got another BBC show, His Dark Materials. We previously had the Golden Compass, now we have the television version of it, and you've got all the main cast spread around each other. I feel like, in terms of TV show posters, there's a fairly standard idea of make it look dramatic and just space all the characters 
around the design. And that's that's pretty much what you have here. There is an attempt at trying to do a sort of two sides. You've got Oxford on one side of it, and on the other side, you've got the Northern Lights and Antarctica and all of that. So you've got this kind of crossing between worlds incorporated into the design. It mostly feels like these are designed primarily for streaming services because obviously when you're thumbing through streaming services, you want to know who's in it. And so you want a big dramatic image with as many of the characters incorporated as possible, especially if they're big major actors like they are here. And I mentioned before that there was going to be another poster for uh, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker and here it is. This one is the teaser design which has Rey and Kylo facing off against each other in their big dramatic battle and even their lightsabers are reflected in the storm clouds around them but looming over them like he's controlling everything, which I guess he was, is the shadow of Palpatine very menacingly looking over the entirety of the scene. This design was the one that I think I put up on my wall mostly because you couldn't actually see Palpatine when I put it in my video because it was so tall, but you could see the action shot, and so I thought that worked best. And also, it's a good way of eliminating Palpatine, who is the worst element of that movie. Now we have a one-sheet design for Dora and the Lost City of Gold, which is the live-action version of the Dora Explorer series, and you have Dora right there in the centre of the design and it focuses a lot more on the adventure element of it because obviously you've got the jungle and the golden tomb around it you've got the characters looking around in wonder you've got the monkey up there sorry not very familiar with Dora the Explorer I'm sure that's probably not a surprise to you. But yeah, this has a very kind of almost uh, Indiana Jones for children kind of vibe to it, which is fine. I think it works well for what it needs to do. Teen Titans go to the movies, the big screen TV spin-off, which obviously has all the characters standing in front of a movie theatre, which obviously makes sense given the movie is a sort of meta-narrative about the Teen Titans wanting a movie made about themselves in a movie about them and so that kind of reflects in the poster design and also at the bottom of the design you've got Deathstroke rolled up in the red carpet because obviously he's the villain of the movie and you want to show him get him in his comeuppance because that's quite appealing to children it almost reminds me of the poster for Richie Rich which does much the same thing and again there is an activity sheet on the back with word searches and colorings and all that jazz now this is a fairly nice poster for the Crimes of Grindelwald. It's nice because it's actually embossed. I don't know if you can actually pick that up on camera very well, but all the edges of it especially and the title are embossed. I believe this was given out at IMAX screenings. I'll tell you right now, I did not pick this up at an IMAX screening. In fact, weirdly enough, I picked this up about a year after it came out. I went and saw something and that was one of the posters that they were giving away. I think that they just had some leftover stock in the back room so they just put it out with the rest of the posters at the time which is fair I don't really care for Harry Potter in general but it's it's a fairly nice design. It seems to have that thing of trying to cram in as many of the characters as possible. I'm not really a big fan of that sort of thing. I feel like having a more dynamic pose and trying to organically put them in there as opposed to just lots and lots of floating heads creates a much more memorable image. Wonder Park, the animated movie that famously doesn't have a director because he was boosted off of the project for sexual harassment allegations, so yikes. But this one has all the characters riding around on a roller coaster and being scared and excited which is a typically eye-catching image for a children's movie you even got smile there in the background really happy and it's a really upbeat image that doesn't really convey the fact that it's actually about a girl running away from the fact that her mother is potentially dying i believe that in the original versions of that movie that character did actually die but then they really softened down the images you can really tell in the final product. You might also notice that the uh, cast billing is a bit unusual. You might not remember Joe Sugg, 
Tom Baker, Casper Lee being in this. That's because in the UK, they localized the voice cast again. Yes, this time they actually replaced several main members of the cast with cast members that are supposedly more recognizable to British viewers. But in particular, Joe Sugg and Casper Lee, both of whom are well known on YouTube, they were very much targeting children in particular who obviously would be very familiar with them on their YouTube channels. Do I even need to say at this point that the children's movie posters likely have some form of activity sheet on the back of them? We had Wreck-It Ralph, now we have Ralph Breaks the Internet. I like the way that in this design, because it's wider, you get more of a sense of scope within it, and it makes it feel like a big, epic, vast world. And there's lots of things going on in the poster design. You've got the characters standing on a Wi-Fi logo, which is sort of cracked, you can see there. There is also lots and lots of various tie-ins for various different companies and apps so you've got google there you've got whatsapp twitter instagram you've got facebook youtube pinterest oh my disney just in case you forgot that this was a disney movie and it doesn't really help the impression that a lot of uh, ralph breaks the internet basically feels like an ad for all these different apps having them all there i think that's spotify isn't it yeah so you've got lots and lots of cross promotion for various internet apps in the poster itself, which is a little bit sketchy for something marketed at children. Hotel Transylvania 3, a monster vacation. He's gonna need a vacation after this vacation. This one again has all the characters posed around each other. There's a lot of activity going on around here. You've got the kid there with the tentacle coming out of the cooler. You've got Frankenstein sort of lobbing his head. You've got Dracula looking miserable at the center of it but he's got a tan you can see the tan lines on his face there you can also see a lot of the characters just sort of causing chaos in the background and you've got the cruise ship where most of the action takes place there's a lot of activity implied by this poster around a character who is very frustrated and again it's a very appealing kid-centric image. Horrible Histories, the movie Rotten Romans. This one has a massive cast, as you can likely tell by the fact that there are so many credits at the top of it, but also so many faces crammed into the design. I don't know why I need to put all of them on the poster, but clearly they felt, oh, well, these are going to be very recognisable, especially the British audiences. Let's put them all on there. And the result is, quite frankly, but ugly. So many different photoshop faces looking in various different directions. No one seems to know quite where they're supposed to be looking at. Derek Jacobi gets a very prominent place even though he's in the movie for about two minutes at best. It feels really overly crowded, especially with the massive logo at the center of it. It just feels really lazily designed. And then you've got the horrible histories rat crowbarred into the corner because there was a tiny microcosm of free space in this design that wasn't taken up by the enormous cast. Uh, it's such a really obnoxious design. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is the poster for Miles Morales, as you can no doubt tell. I got this when I saw the movie at an early screen. They were giving away posters of the various different characters, and I picked Miles Morales. I almost got the Spider-Noir one, but then I figured, oh, I better not take two, because, you know, that's, that's being greedy. That takes away from someone who might actually want that as well. So I decided to just stick with this one, but it very much captures the sense of the movie. You've got Miles wearing his Spider-Man costume underneath his, his hoodie and his shorts, and he's got his Nikes on, and it's a really dramatic pose, almost like you've caught him in the midst of the action. You've got the sort of art star of the movie almost faithfully represented, especially in the titling font as well. One thing I actually hadn't noticed up until just now, now is actually the newsprint effect on his sleeve there and the highlights in general on his jacket. Again, a nice way of incorporating the art style of the movie 
into the design. And this is it. We've come to the very last one in this half of the collection. Home is calling for Aquaman here. And we've got Aquaman standing majestically on his stone with his staff, along with a whole bunch of sharks, turtles, whales, and dolphins all coming towards the camera, which really gives you a sense of the epic scale of the movie, but also the way that he can command all of them. You've got the lens flare there, almost seems like a sort of summoning symbol behind Aquaman for all of these different aquatic creatures. And also you get a sense of the underwater city as well on the side of it there. But it's a really dramatic poster that puts Aquaman front and centre in his own design. And it makes it look cool and exciting, which is exactly what you want because Aquaman does have a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a dorky superhero, unfortunately. And you can tell that that was definitely what they were trying to counter in this design. This one actually came out of Sci-Fi Magazine. On the back of it is not actually another poster, it's the complete history of the universe. What the genre tells us about our past, present and future, and it's all this kind of timeline of events that have happened in various different movies. Oh my god, there's a bit of development. I was putting this whole thing away, and then I noticed there was a pocket on the front of it, and I went, maybe there's something in that pocket. Maybe I ought to just check. And I opened it up, and sure enough, there's even more posters inside of that. Even more. Oh my goodness. On top of it, you've got the original 3D glasses for Spy Kids 3D. It's even got a strap on the back of it to keep it on the back of your head. So let me just put those on. Yeah, this is exactly what the viewing experience was like, watching it with red and blue glasses. I probably shouldn't keep it on here too long, just in case there's loads and loads of dust on it, which there probably is. Oh, man. First up, we got some more Total Film posters for War of the Worlds. Two, actually, for War of the Worlds. So this is the teaser design, which is literally just the text on front of the fiery, viney uh, landscape. It's a Tom Cruise poster that uncharacteristically doesn't have a massive picture of his face on it. Instead, it just focuses on the gigantic, epic scale of the events. It's worth noting that War of the Worlds is one of those movies where, before was released they didn't actually tell you a whole lot about it and they deliberately try to withhold how much information was actually known about the movie you can definitely get that sense from this poster and then we have the more final design i think my personal favorite out of the war of the world's posters this one where you've got a flaming planet in the grip of an alien hand with the vines wrapped around it and you've got the text war of the worlds surrounding it again uncharacteristically doesn't have tom cruise on it uh that was something they rectified for the dvd release which looked terrible and it's a shame because this is a really dramatic really atmospheric piece of poster art the born supremacy they stole his identity now he wants it back this one is a more kind of action movie pose you've got jason Bourne wearing his big overcoat he's got a gun in his hand you've got the cia symbol in the background there you've also got this sense that he's out for justice he's out for revenge he's this brooding dark shadow shadowy figure. The Terminal, Life is Waiting. This is the Steven Spielberg movie. I think this poster gives you a good sense of the premise and you've got Tom Hanks's Victor Navorsky there standing around to himself while you've got everyone else moving around the bustle of this airport. There's lots of motion blur surrounding him, but he's static because, of course, he has to live in an airport. He's stuck there. And so you get the sense that for Tom Hanks's character, life is in a holding pattern and everyone else is just going about their business. Which is kind of fitting for this current moment, to be honest. Collateral. It started like any other night. This one does have two fairly good designs on it, but what they've done is that they've taken the two one sheets, so you had one sheet for Tom Cruise here and the other for Jamie Foxx, and they've pasted them together, and it looks a little bit awkward. Individually, that moody pose of Tom Cruise holding the gun would grab your attention, but here, because he's meant to be, I presume, in the back seat of a cab or he's sitting down in a bar and that's the shot they've taken it from it looks very weird having jamie fox standing here 
and Tom Cruise sitting and then the cab in the background. It just feels like a bunch of crowbar different elements together to try and get the two leads in the same artwork. Wimbledon, the new romantic comedy from the makers of Notting Hill, Bridget Jones and Love Actually. Nothing beats playing on grass. This is a typically romantic comedy sort of pose in that you've got Paul Bettany there looking vaguely serious for what kind of movie this is and then you've got Kirsten Dunst who is taking herself much less seriously and laughing it gives you the sense that oh it's upbeat and joyful it's weird it doesn't really have that much dynamic chemistry between the two leads again it feels like they're kind of pasted together it's it's a little bit of an odd design and I guess this is meant to be some sort of embrace like you'd almost imagine that he'd have his hand wrapped around her or something like that to try and tie the two images together especially because she's got a back arch you don't really get the sense they have that much chemistry together from this one poster which is odd. Speaking of Bridget Jones, Bridget Jones, the edge of reason, the perfect boyfriend, the perfect life, what could possibly go wrong? Same Bridget, brand new diary. And it's a shot that is basically a massive picture of Rene Zellweger's face looking, ooh, I'm surprised, ooh. It's a poster that doesn't really tell you very much about the movie, but it doesn't really need to because, you know, it's got Bridget Jones played by Renee Zellweger, and that's all they really need to sell you on it. National Treasure. Now, this one is a bit different to the usual in that the puzzle sheet is on the front of it this time. Follow the instructions on the reverse to discover the code, and you could win a chance to be a spy for a day. Ooh. You got some sort of code on the front of it here. So this is not really technically a theatrical poster poster crack this seven letter code using the grids on the front of the poster and then go online to the filmfactory.co.uk slash treasure that site doesn't exist anymore so don't even try that figure that one out for yourself if you want to i don't know why you would want to try and figure out the code for a competition that ended 15 years ago but you can, potentially. On this design, you've got a lot of action on the side of it here, mostly from very late in the film. You've got the characters in the catacombs, Nicolas Cage holding on to Diane Kruger there, and then you've got the action pose faces there. Nicolas Cage looks like he's caught mid-movement, uh, like, ooh, I'm having a photograph taken on me, ooh. The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. It can take a lifetime to find true love, and she's got 30 days from the director of Pretty Woman and Runaway Bride. Again, this sort of bridal element is really incorporated in the poster, in that you've got Anne Hathaway wearing white, she's got the tiara on, which is both princess and potentially wedding dress material. You've got, I guess, what are meant to be her potential suitors holding her in the background, but clearly they couldn't get the actors in to do this photo shoot, so it's just a bunch of hands holding on to I presume whatever the double is for Anne Hathaway here. It's a bit of a strange design to be honest. We're on the subject of Anne Hathaway. Ella, enchanted. This Christmas all spell breaks loose. Ha ha ha, that's funny. This kind of sells itself mostly on the popularity of Anne Hathaway because that's pretty much the entirety of the design in that you've got Anne Hathaway there smiling towards camera. There's a bit of magical sparkle to imply the magical theme of the film but mostly it's all about Ella with the big letters and Anne Hathaway smiling at the audience. A tiny tiny postcard for about a boy. Let's see if I can raise this up to the camera and yep okay. It's the typical standard design for the movie. You've got young Nicholas Holt staring up at Hugh Grant there. There's a lot of posters at this time that are just characters on white backgrounds. I don't know why they went for that very simple effect it doesn't really tell you all that much about the movie, but in some cases it doesn't really need to. Like the Ella Enchanted one we just looked at, the main appeal of the poster is Hugh Grant, really, to be honest. Now, these ones came out of an issue of Total Film way back in the day. I think you can tell because you've got the very, very old logo there. Uh, let's see if I can try and get all this in frame. So this one is the poster for... The Untouchables. Al Capone. He ruled Chicago with absolute power. No one could stop him until Elliot Ness and a small force of men swore they would bring him down. You don't really get taglines that long these days. You don't get taglines that pretty much encapsulate the movie. I know that some posters back in the day had paragraphs of text on them and it just felt like it was overloading them. Do they actually expect anyone to read it? I suppose in the days where before you could actually look a film up on IMDb, that was somewhat necessary, but it 
it just feels like an overbait prologue. This one ha does have a bit of damage on it, as you can no doubt notice. This one probably came out of a magazine in 1998, so... You have to take it with a little bit of slack here. But you've got the untouchables with their guns pointing at the camera. I think that sort of design is actually banned on all under underground. You cannot have a character pointing the gun directly at the audience. Uh, presumably because it's a bit too shocking and a bit too... If you caught it in the corner of your eye, you might jump or something like that. You've also got Al Capone looming over them in the background, as this to imply his incredible power. And there does appear to be a bit of damage going on here as well. Not sure what's happened there with his eye. On the other side of it, the Bruce Lee classic, Enter the Dragon. The first American-produced martial arts spectacular with the legendary Bruce Lee and the last sadly. This one has the classic artwork where he's holding the chain sticks. As you no doubt know, in the UK they were notorious for censoring out nunchucks or chain sticks out of movies. And Enter the Dragon was released with that material intact at first, but then when James Furman came in as the head of the BBFC, what he did is that he recalled the film. He got Warner Brothers to take it out of circulation so that he could cut it and remove all that footage because there have been rumours that kids have been imitating Bruce Lee and trying to get all kinds of illegal weaponry. So when they re-released the movie, they changed the artwork so uh, instead of it being chain sticks, they'd rebrushed it so that it was actually a kendo stick or something like that, which, you know... A stick is quite accessible. I mean, most people can find bats and things like that. So I don't know if that really addresses the problem, but that even carried over to some of the, the home video artwork. The very first UK DVD of Enter the Dragon, which, is, which was cut, and I believe that was released in the very late 90s, has the stick artwork on it. A bit of a spoiler on this poster. You've got Jim Kelly there, dead. On the poster, I feel like that gives away the fate of the character a little bit. <laughs> now we've got an activity sheet for Star Wars Episode 2, where you can colour in the characters, join the dots to reveal Yoda. It's not even a poster, it's just an activity sheet on both sides of it. I don't know why I kept this. I must have just picked up and went, oh well, keep it anyway. And the rest of these are just duplicates of what we've already seen, so I'm just going to put these back in the front where they belong. So yeah, that's it. That's the last of the posters. So yeah, that's uh, about half of my movie poster collection. Thank you for joining me on this incredibly long, indulgent journey. If you've managed to make it to the end, bravo. Really, absolutely bravo. This has been something that I've been working on for absolutely months, trying to whittle down the footage. And I hope that it's been enjoyable. I hope that it's been a really nice trip down memory lane. I know it certainly has been for me. I feel very old going through over 20 years of movie poster memorabilia. Maybe at some point I will do the other half of this collection, but definitely not right now. Bye, everyone.